My name is Rhapsody, his name is Sneaky Teak, and welcome back to the Ladder Street for another week. How's it going, bud? I am doing awesome, and I'm thinking about whether or not we can put together some really disgusting builds mm -hmm. with Sentient. It really, I really feels like we are going to have the ability to. Basically, I think both of us are looking for the same thing here. I mean, we said it explicitly before the video, but... Explosive. Machine gun. Healing machine gun. A machine gun of love. Let us... It's such a strong build. Blow up every single enemy. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. like, I think... Oh my god! Oh, we got the pieces already. Wraps. It's... <laughs> we are so damn prepared. But Seraph the Chase, but it's okay. It's okay. Because it's Covenant 2. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if we set up on the top floor and mm -hmm. still have, like, some regen left in the deck by that point, we can still utilize regen against Seraph the Chase. Yeah, yeah. And just the pure output of the damage can be enough. We mm -hmm. need to do, what, a thousand damage? Uh, yes. I think it's a uh, thousand five hundred? Thousand? Got it. I do not recall. I just know that uh, it, it is going to be easier to achieve without some sort then of C25. endless source of regen. Yeah, exactly. That you mm -hmm. want in C25. So here's a question. We've got the Sentient. Now, the Sentient has those two relics in this class, specifically the Awoken, that are huge for different styles of play. There's the, the Bustling Fungus, which is a, mm -hmm. a Risk of Rain instead, um, that <laughs> doubles your regen, as well as the, uh, the one that doubles your damage from spike hits. So yep. is there ever a circumstance where you specifically want to choose either the Dark Forge or the Herzl's Horde first, specifically this because we have the Sentient? Great question, and it's one that I struggle with. Mm -hmm. My, Same. I I kind of a very long time ago, probably a hundred hours of play ago or a couple hundred hours of play ago, I have mostly completely leaned in on going Herzl's Horde first for everyone, mm -hmm. and that's partly just simplicity. You know, not trying to differentiate between the different classes makes my starts more simple. I have found that it is more likely that my relic informs my champion than the other way around mm -hmm. because at c25 at least there are some relics that i'm just not going to skip like if there's uh here's a great example uh, that some people sleep on if i'm offered an advanced prototype in this box i'm gonna take it mm -hmm. and i just won the first three rings and so i can pick the champion based on what i think is going to scale to the end game best instead of trying to take the champion that secures the early game right Mm -hmm. um, and so that's usually the order that I do. Um, but I don't know that that's like always true. I've definitely had times where I thought, oh, dang, I wish I knew what champs were available, right? Yep. That's similarly, it's usually the order I do, but specifically mm -hmm. the champion where I think like, mm, I don't know, is the mm -hmm. sentient. Uh, yeah. That said, if you do get, you know, uh, the the bustling fungus or the spiky spikes, I'm going to be calling them here because I don't necessarily <laughs> remember their names at this point. What are they called? Because there's two. There's one that gives you plus one attack, and there's one that that gives you one more spike, one more damage per spike. The plus one attack, I believe, is gnarled root, and that was included most recently, and it's the one that I remember. The bloating fungus. Okay. Yeah. So not okay. It's kind of yeah. close. And then uh, gnarled no. root is the one you were talking about mm -hmm. there, but petrified petrified crucible. crucible. Got it. Got it. God, Emblem of the Exiles is just also it's very, so powerful. very good. But Thorn Fruit is is the more I play, the more I think this is one of the best relics in the game. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, really Sal good. would definitely agree with you there. I've heard Sal express mm -hmm. that opinion uh, prior. All right, I think we should go for the artifact first, and the reason okay. is because if we do find either of those and go into them, but don't find the sentient that happens to match them. Draw mm. sentient is still fine in that circumstance. Yeah. And then trying to build into it using other things. Yeah. And and we could pick up a hollow or something. Oh. Wow. I I really like this tempered talisman, actually. Mm-hmm. It's a lot more heal. It it's a lot more heal. It's specifically the glimmer and that glimmer. makes me want to mm. take it. Get the double benefit, the extra health as well yeah. as the extra damage. Cleansing water, oftentimes I'll look at super early. Like if we for instance, actually, if we didn't have the two Glimmers in the base deck and also mm -hmm. were the Exiled champions, so we didn't have the Restores, we had Root Seeds, mm -hmm. I'd feel no problem with taking the Cleansing Water instead yeah. just to win a bunch of Trials. But it's the Talisman. Yeah. Talisman's great. No! <laughs> this is okay, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So we have to make a decision now, though. Do we 
go in on bristling and just make that our end game or do we take cultivating and then just use the draw to power up something else i think we have to go cultivating because bristling's end game is have one spike right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we don't have any other spike sources right now well but it, it but it i do think that bristling is better for the rings before the chase, at least. And so definitely, in terms of snowballing. Definitely, definitely agreed. But with two Wicklashes mm -hmm. to power up a unit that stands behind the Sentient, as well as two yeah. Glimmers, I don't feel threatened yeah. yet. Let's go cultivating. I'm in. Cool. There's also a possibility I haven't taken a cultivating start in a long time. Mm -hmm. So that feels good. I mean, look, maybe we don't have to take two draw gems this time, although I almost certainly will make the case to do so. I don't know what you're talking about. Are there other boss relics? Yeah, apparently there are. So I have the version of the game where they patched both of them out. <laughs> um, but there used to be a thing called a, a Capacity, Capacity and NRGI. Capacity. I that sounds exotic. I mean, they're extremely exotic to me because I've never <laughs> engaged with any of them. I'm pulling up my game right now because I actually want to look while you're playing this fight at how many times I've taken non-draw in, in like, my most recent C25 wins. I'd be interested to hear. Uh, okay. I'll do a little screen management here. Let's just make sure we... No! <laughs> collect! No, never mind. We've got these glimmers. The glimmer will hard carry. Oh, it really will for a huge period of time, thankfully. Okay. Oh, I took capacity on my as my first on my most recent win. How and then dare a draw. You. You've forsaken. <laughs> the oh, good nature. a draw and then a capacity. All right, all right. I, I, for what it's worth, I think that I take draw. I would say that I take draw fifty or sixty percent of the time. Mm -hmm. But I do sometimes take energy or capacity. And in fact, every single one of my last five wins is a mix of draw and one of either energy or capacity. That that does make sense because oftentimes you can find a way to get away without having the extra draw, uh, but you can also find ways to get away without having the extra capacity or the, the energy. Yeah. It really depends on your clan combination, I find a lot of the time. But I do really find the same experience of like draw mm. gem for me is objectively, I think. Okay, uh, I'm going to step off the word <laughs> objectively. I, I think there is a very, very strong case to be made for it being the correct choice about 70% of the time to yep. the point that do you think there's something that could be done to the other gems? Maybe uh, if you take the energy gem, you get also some extra damage on your Pyre Shard, or if you take mm. the capacity gem, you also get some more healing. To I your don't pyre. know. I mean, I think in some cases it's more just that you can find a way to work with all of them and it's the most linear path to take the draw. By the mm -hmm. way, are you are you interested in this fire grow? A hundred percent. I mean, we've got a bunch of draw from the sentient. This yeah. will effectively just like give us the ability to bankroll yeah. the expensive cards that we're really going to want from the Awoken. It's the kind of thing that lets you not take the energy relic, right? Yep. This is, this is actually a great talking point. Part of the reason why it is so common to take the blue gem is that there are cards like Pyre Grow and enhancements to reduce your energy burden. Mm -hmm. There are cards like Space Prism and really good relics to reduce your pip burden. And you've also got Ascension and Descension. But it is much harder to reduce your draw burden. It the way is, to do that is removals, but that's expensive. It is much harder to do that now. Interestingly, mm -hmm. back when the game was in closed beta, draw was so much simpler yeah there were a bunch of cards that had draw written on them that no longer do but also these cards because now infinite say, draw plus one <laughs> next turn instead yep, of this yep. turn so you can't just like yeah. two end graphs through the entire deck win which becomes good but it's it's just the the capac they're they're very different places right it's way easier to get the energy and pips online than mm -hmm. the draw but i think that the reason that i'm still only taking on average like 50 or 60 percent draw is that I'm sometimes responding to very specific cards. Like mm -hmm. I pick up the Shadow Siege and then I make it work. And draw is usually not the thing that's gonna make that work. I just need a little bit more space, right? Interestingly, I, I tend to find draw being the thing that makes a lot of my decks work because I need to draw this card in the first couple turns. To otherwise, fix the other thing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like mm -hmm. if, if this doesn't get hidden passaged behind my block mm -hmm. on the top floor, I already lost. So yeah. 
gonna need. Well, that. let's see what happens in this run. I'm I'm excited to see what our at the end of 25, if we get there, how many draw relics we took. Because mm -hmm. I think we're gonna find opportunities to take some other stuff. This run is likely to take draw. I would say so, especially with maybe the base pips. Deck. Maybe pips because we end up having to build up a BPR backline depending on what we see. Mm -hmm. But draw with this kind of yeah, it's coming. So what are you thinking here? Are you ever driven to just take a molded to have one in the deck? Yes, I am often driven to do that. But in particular, I'm looking at the next mm -hmm. area. I'm seeing this remnant banner next mm -hmm. to a Merchant of Steel. I'm thinking, I mean, we could try and get a remnant related unit, get it reasonably upgraded. And if it's a unit that benefits from reform, we can start utilizing that in that circumstance. You know, I actually love this clan combo too, because as an example, Awoken has access to Animus of Will. Animus of Will loves mm. to be reformed because that strength buff from the Reformation it really goes a long way when you're a triple attacker. Um, so I, I like this molded quite a lot. I think it's good tech. Actually, in exactly what you just said, we have two Wicklashes in the base deck. We're about to possibly mm -hmm. take a molded or a Wicklash. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to mm -hmm. be the Hallowed Drippings here. Um, but if we'd prefer, we can go to the Awoken Mana side and fish for Animus of Speed or Animus of Will to try and mm -hmm. utilize those with the wick clashes. I, I actually quite like that play. I think it makes mm -hmm. our our hits in the base deck better, and it lets us start getting those energy reductions on our ingraft and maybe hold over there too, and then also on our other like key healing cards, right? Yep. I think that's a great line. I'm super interested, but now it's wick clash or molded. I'm leaning towards mm -hmm. molded, but it's also possible that we put a unit behind and then just never hit anything yeah. with molded. Well, it, yeah, it's totally possible. I, I think the reason that I lean molded is, especially at C2, our removal costs are still low enough and our deck is still small enough that we can kind of correct our saturation later on, but we mm -hmm. will almost definitely never see molded again. So there's two Wicklash in the deck, but if we ever do want reform, it's now or never. Hmm. You ever take a so Parapin Thug early just for some extra money? I think we could. I absolutely think we could. Because I'm looking at this Huskerman and I'm like, wow, you look like a glimmer that takes pips. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Huskermit. It has great, great runs for me at C25, but I just don't think we need it right now. Is there you want to be so rich? I, I do want to be really rich, but like, I, I, I want to be money. I, let's get money, but I don't know <laughs> if... I don't know if this changes our mind to go for a Merchant of Steel right. and a Remnant Banner instead now. Uh, well, do we have a Merchant of Steel in Ring 3? Uh, we do, next to an Unstable Vortex. The opposite side has a Hellvent, so if we happen to get a Merchant of Magic upgrade in these areas, we could go for the Hellvent instead. Oh, that's post Talos. Okay, Ring 4. And that's oh, right. a good Sorry. side there. Yeah, 3 doesn't have a Steel. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder... Yeah, I wonder if it's ever now. Well, dang, that's a Herzal's Horde too, though. Mm -hmm. And we've already talked about how relevant trinkets are. You want? We should go. We should go ham here. We should stick with the the Merchant of Magic, I think, and we should still take this Paraffin Thug. Can, can I make one final pitch to the other sure, side? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, if we go to the Merchant of Steel and the Remnant Banner over here, we can then go for the Herzal's Horde and still hit an and Awoken still see Awoken. Okay, but then we've skipped two Merchant of Magics. No cost upgrades. Yes. Is that okay? Uh, I mean, looking at the deck in its current base form and the fact that we've also got a Pyro growing there and the zero cost in the first cycle, I Probably kind of think okay. it is. Yeah. I, the big thing that I'd like is to be able to, should we choose to, um, dupe an upgraded ingraft because that can be such a powerful engine later on. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of making sure that that's available at some point, but we can wait. If we already had the explosive, I'd be much more excited about that. But a lot of the yeah, time, I'm don't. looking at the, the mm -hmm. engraft and it says heal for nothing because you probably got full mm -hmm. health off of the other cards already. Gain an energy if you've already removed this. <laughs> yeah. And then yep, replace yep. this card next yep. turn. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I'm, I'm in on this Paraffin Thug Mer Merchant of Steel. Honestly, I think it's cool. the more consistent path anyway. And then we'll get so much money. Money. We gotta get money. Ooh, we could be pretty cash right now if we made you big and then just gave you spikes and put you on a floor by yourself. <laughs> That's kind of fun. That's a slay. That's a weird. That is. We should do that. I've never done that. Yeah. Let's let's do it.
I'm that, all in. That sure counts as slay. We almost certainly should have checked this first. Yeah, but we needed to get this money ready mm -hmm. right now. Huh. So if you want to beat her, you know, I really do think that Lady of the House is pretty. Is a pretty good unit. But do we care? We could put plus 10 on her. We 30, can put 5, plus 40. 10s on her really, really easily, and she's just got, like, a good body for it. Mm -hmm. Part of me is thinking about the Quickless Baron and just popping it behind the Paraffin Thug, letting it get very big, and then trying to use something like a Vine Grass to push it forward, but we literally have, like, two rings to find that Vine... Uh, actually, one yeah. ring to find that Vine Grass. Uh, so, yeah, Lady of the House, I think. Okay. Unless... And unless... We hold out for the Awoken banner and don't want another banner unit. What I'm thinking is, if we take and upgrade this unit right now, I am very confident in our unit's capacity to win fights for several rings. And so that lets us be very choosy about what we want to build toward from that point forward, right? Mm -hmm. And these bodies could be relevant towards the end game by pushing Ser Seraph of Chaste around for more debuffs. Um, if, we're, if we are trying to babysit like Rejuvenation or something at the end. Oh, wait, so your pitch is not just using Wicklashes to buff the Lady of the House, but taking this and then giving it the plus 10 from the shop? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, we've got a We've got like a pretty good lineup right here. Mm-hmm. It's just strong units. We can, like, we can probably just throw the, the draw sent in on the bottom floor for extra draw and then just set up on the midline as our kill floor. Sure, and just get those slays. I'm mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. Into with spikes three doesn't matter to this me. This is fun. Oh. It kind of feels like the world is my oyster. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, the benefit of the low confidence. Certainly, don't need to glimmer down here. Don't want to. For the damage belongs to this floor. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> Just pressing in turn. <laughs> wait, hang on. Is this video games? Uh, I'm. If we Wicklash the front one, we now get 20 more. And then we have to, uh, like, another Wicklash in the deck so we yes. can start charging the Paraffin Thug up. Good. This is perfect. Okay, get rid of as many of these as possible. Oops. Tiny Seuss, I forgot about that. <laughs> Played those slightly in the wrong order. It's totally fine. We'll be okay. <laughs> Wait, we will be okay, right? It's... Yeah, we'll win in the... Whoa. Uh, yeah, we're um, losing actually, the house. Are we getting reform, though? Maybe. Is it in the next nine? Yay, there yes, it, is. it is. That's what I, I thought that it was, so we can I bring her back I never had a doubt in the world. Didn't need to bring her back. Only slays now. Mm -hmm. Only money now. Oh, my gosh. I don't think I've ever had this much cash at this point. Ooh. That certainly says Vine Grasp. It does. It's a little harder because uh, the reorganization of our own units with it is hampered a little bit by the Tempered Talisman. I, I find yeah. myself more often than not now, like if I don't have a preferred favorite otherwise, and I think we have other scaling options. I could be open to a Razor Sharp Edge, but I don't think yeah. it's the Steel Enhancer here. Um, See, I've been taking Vine Grasp more commonly. It's, it's good utility, right? You can move a gilded wing in front of a zero damage armored unit in mm -hmm. the late game because your damage is a little shy you can move forward a a cannon that you've been building on your back line yep. um and something that i was going to say is i think a lot of the time i get to the screen and i just click on razor sharp edge because razor sharp edge is so strong but mm. we look at our deck like don't we already have two razor sharp edges in this deck i think wicklash is razor sharp edge you know, and 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 so it's easy to forget that, but we've already kind of leaned in on that. We've already got a plus ten damage that we can work around. So I like this fine grasp; it's good. Mm -hmm. Our will... talisman makes it weirdly harder to use on our own units, but Just it also makes bit. it better removal. I, I will also say, like in the worst case scenario, well, not the mm -hmm. worst case, in the next to worst case scenario for us, a lot of the time this is just draw one, replace itself. Yeah, true, true, and then we're gonna heal it anyway. Clever. Ooh. Whoa, that is an early subsuming blade, but it, but that it's not money. It's not money, but you can upgrade it with money. 
That's true. You can use money to upgrade this subsuming blade. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is going in a very different direction than I initially had anticipated or planned for this run. But I love this combo, actually, Melting Rim and Awoken. It's got a lot of really cool synergies. Yeah, there's a lot of different directions you can go in it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm on board with this subsuming blade here. It's super early. I, I think it would be foolish to skip it. It just, it's something that kills things. We can kill I, our own units, for mm -hmm. what it's worth. I, I will also say here that the uh, the Molten Casement, oftentimes oh, yeah. when I am playing uh, Melting Remnant, the Molten Casement will be my entire plan for the mm -hmm. uh, for the defense scaling in the end fight. Um, a little harder to do with the Seraph the Chase, but you can still do it if you set yeah. up high. Stealth it's, 2 is a big difference from when it was Stealth 1. Yep, yeah, this, this is like ridiculously powerful when you utilize mm -hmm. it correctly, and I cannot wait to look for a run where I actually get to do that. The, and what's the smoke card too? Very in-game viable. Engulfed in smoke, yeah. It's a uh, two-cost yeah. spell for two uh, stealth. Are we going Herzl's or are we going to get that upgrade? I'm looking at this upgrade right now and I'm thinking like if we get a holdover on this Subsuming Blade, we can just rock it out. Mm -hmm. hmm. Do we need an Awoken unit now? We just took the Lady of the House and the Paraffin Thug. We, we, we don't but we never get another one if we don't take it here. Yeah, unless we get a unit draft from this, well, not from this fight. Yeah, that's not possible, right? Mm -hmm. There's no unit drafts further down either. So I... yeah, this is our last opportunity to go for an Awoken unit. I'm not entirely yeah. off board with that. There are also a lot of relics here that help us and also help us define our run going forwards. Mm. And I wonder if, like, do we take... So let's let's think about... let's Actually, this is a good time to look at the Compendium. So we get it. to see a couple units here. And so what's our hit rate? Because some of the units we're just probably not going to take. Mm -hmm. I, I found actually this exact exercise really, really instructive uh, mm -hmm. back when I was starting the game. Uh, and now I've kind of like formed it down into like a set of intuition that I kind of work on. Right. Um, but being able to look at, okay, how many of these are hits, how many of these are whiffs? That's yep. like a pretty good hit, quick with the ability to buff its attack, it's mm -hmm. pretty comfortably taken. Animus of Will is the best hit that we can make. All the rejuvenates, yep. I would say, at the moment, pretty good, but They're ideally good. we end up getting explosive to yep. uh, to Agreed. hybridize later, and then they become trash because we don't want to put any of our rejuvenates on them past that point. Yeah, and they take a lot of space, and so you start to become more pip constrained, especially with the kind of cycling dead units of of the dregs if we're keeping them around, right? Mm -hmm. Husk Kermit, we already said, looks like a glimmer with legs. Shattered Shell is another thing that wants to slay right now, and frankly, we're not having trouble getting to the back line. Yep. We I'll, might start to, but not yet. I'll also quickly note at this point that neither the Edge Prime nor Shard Chandler are available from these unit selections. Yep. Nor the Wild Wildwood Custodian. All the Chandlers. Wilting Sapwood, Vine Mother, I mean, like... Mm -hmm. Vine Mother's nice. I think we're going to this merchant. <laughs> I don't think we're looking at this Awoken unit. I'm not sold, right? We've got a... The Animus both look great, and other than that, it's not clear how much of a role it fills. Mm-hmm. I think on a higher covenant, I might have chosen to take the sweeper. There it is. Wow. We just do it. Like send it. Yes. Oh yeah, send it. And we've got all this cash. We might as well get the the big upgrades. We should at least check these before we sure, uh, reroll. Sure. Uh, sure. We re Are we always rerolling this much into magic for a cost reduction on something at the absolute least? Well, do do we ever take the plus twenty damage consume on something? Oh, well, <laughs> that certainly scale. Like the big sludge is right now for us, the lady of the house, one pip larger, but way better. Yeah, big sludge is so strong. We need capacity Although, to put it on the same floor as the paraffin thug, though. Mm, is this our capacity run? It may well be. I Look, it's just big sludge. We take it, right? I love this unit. Yes. It's so strong now. So we've already It's gone. another thing that has a green box, by the way, which is at C25, I'm starting to get really scared about how much I'm leaning in on buff-based win mechanisms. Mm -hmm. But I th think we can get away with it. Yeah, Rage 5 becomes really hard for a Seraph to deal with. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's click that bad boy. 
Okay. And then if we are always going for a cost reduction here as well, do we want to re-roll so we know what the higher option is before we go here? Because it's possible we see... What's a good example? The Armageddon event, and the Armageddon event has the Divine Shield or Damage Shield that it could possibly give you, and we see a yeah. double stack already in the store. It makes. It I guess I could choice. see putting the plus 20 damage consume on the sword, and the sword might not be a bad pick. Hmm. Yeah, plus 20 consume on sword isn't bad. Right? It's okay. going to be consumed anyway once it's upgraded. But that's, that's really, I mean, that's the stretch, right? Well... Dante, what? many units we have one dead weight <laughs> in the base deck already as well because we have the uh covenant rank two we can look the paraffin thug is eventually getting cut from this deck and so is the lady of the house like that's just happening at this point I probably think. or or at least like they their job is certainly to get us to the end game and be strong right mm -hmm. i think this dante ain't bad and reform works pretty nicely with multi-hitters this is our animus of will plus yep and it's Dante. You know what Dante's unit type is, Rhapsody? <laughs> I do. It's a Dante type unit. <laughs> Dante. Dante is the best Pokemon in all of Monster Train. Mm -hmm. hey, the Dante concept that there's a unit. custom chantage. Yeah, Dante. Type Dante. Favorite activity. Dante. Dante. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do, you wanna, do you want to send a reroll yeah, here as well? We, we should. We should. We should. And because there's a chance that we might... We're really going to care about this energy, I think. Yes. We can uh, drop that on the end graph to try and fix our energy yeah. problems for a bit. I like that. I'm kind of happy to pass all of these, though. Me too. I'm wondering if we do a couple removals here since mm -hmm. the you know, we're making so much money, right? So we need to think, right? By this Merchant of Steel, so two spaces away, we get Dante into our deck. This is mm. just, we are definitely going here. So we've got the double removal yeah. there. We've yeah. got the Merchant of Steel. We've got also extra money available at that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's like our huge Dante area. So what are we going to be doing in this area, right? That if makes me be... wonder if Sorry? we're going to the right to Helvin. Mm -hmm. No, we would go Unstable Vortex probably for removals, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. This does have a Remnant Banner and Forgotten Boons, so this like would be yeah. fishing for whatever we want effectively at the Merchant of Steel by that point. Yeah. Because this what is another one of those situations to where we could, as an example, just then like dupe Subsuming Blade, but we're really... The Subsuming Blade is going to be awkward because of how much we want to get slays with our Paraffin Thug. We're going to be like slaying our own units pretty consistently. Mm -hmm. We might end up duping Molded? And then removing aggressively so we can draw it consistently so that we can just slay our own dregs over and over again. Oh. That's a real consideration. I, I think the, this with the plus eight already yeah. has on it, I think the subduing yeah. blade is almost always going to already have a target. The shiny sewards even yeah. die to it right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm kind of looking at this and thinking we should get a couple removals. I'm increasingly really? sold. So, hmm. yeah. my, my sell in the other direction, right, is that mm -hmm. if we do go to the Wax and Archers Merchant of Steel here, mm -hmm. I'm thinking one of our eventual flaws is a big sludge standing mm -hmm. in front of a Dante and the big sludge mm -hmm. having extra HP and possibly multi-strike and the Dante behind yeah. it having quick. Yeah, I like that. So I, I really feel like that gives us the opportunity We're to try need... and invest some upgrades into the big sludge. And then We're going to we need also... some money for those. <sighs> yeah. Go for more okay. removal, more removal. Let's just go tackle this boss. We can certainly beat it. Um, a lot of my desire to remove here is min-maxing around getting to our like meta scaling, right? Mm -hmm. But I think we'll be, we'll certainly win, and I think we meta scale well enough, and we probably even do care about this money for the reasons that you said. We've got big, expensive upgrades to get to. All right, Dante. Let's drop the sent in on the bottom floor. What what are we what are we doing for our battle plan again this time? Unfortunately, they do enter with fire armor as well, so the uh, slays aren't going to be triggered by the paraffin thug repeatedly. Ooh, you're right. They're slightly too healthy, but that also means that we can glimmer if we don't do any damage, and they'll be reduced to one. Mm -hmm. So that's actually perfect. So I think we still do slay second row. Um, oh, yeah, and then just start that. Yeah, I like that. I'm on board. And we've got health to play around with too if we have to skip playing some candles or whatever. It's not a big deal. 
The Glimmer here does set up one Slay on... Actually, uh, two if I also use the... No, actually, I can do it without the Vine Grasp, but we can set up another Slay. And it seems yeah. like the most valuable thing we get to do with the turn, though. Yeah. Can't send yeah, me to the back great. if I'm already uh, only unit on the floor. <laughs> and then this means that there's another Harvest up top, too. The mm -hmm. Priests will go up to the top. So we're kind of... We're splitting ourselves, but it's working. No, oh, we have a drake that we can kill if we if we want to start the subsuming blade going. Oh yeah, we're definitely gonna be doing that. Okay. Uh it's just what do we do with the rest of the turn? Do we actually want the Lady of the House out on the field? Maybe we wait until next cycle to play that out. Mm-hmm. I mean simplifies things a bit. Yeah, because this turn we're kind of hard locked into specifically for the money playing the glimmer on this mm -hmm. floor. It's also a health issue yeah, here. We care about the health. And also the Subsuming Blade, so we can't play the double Wicklash as well as the Lady of the House. Yeah, I'm on board. Yeah. Do we want to Wicklash anything, or are we just shorting ourselves one energy this turn? Um... Nothing, right? Yeah, I kind of I kind of agree. I kind of agree. Mm -hmm. We could... we If we were going to play a Wicklash, we would want to really play both. So that we could get some meaningful burnout on, on our unit. Because <laughs> otherwise... They're likely to just burn out before the end, especially if we're playing Pyro Grow, and I think we do. Okay, cool. We could play Lady of the House bot row to push these frontliners. We it's not could, terrible. but it prevents all of the damage against the Sentient next turn, which is offsetting the negative draw from the Pyro Grow. Yeah. Oh, I meant behind them. Oh, behind sorry. The I, I, I think I was thinking of the play of putting it in front. I was like, mm -hmm. that's the mm. thing that Teague said. It has to yeah. be. See, okay, but I love this. I love this moment because here we are at Covenant 2, fairly early in a run, and there's already such a wide surface of potential plays to make around unit placement. I think it's the most, like, deep part of the game. Mm -hmm. I think it's really where the skill ceiling gets the highest is positioning in this game. It gets really complex, and I think Melting Remnant is the hardest. Oh, definitely, especially when you get My to My favorite this... clan. I... That's your favorite? Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. I'm interested to hear that. Yeah, be because they are so difficult and so dynamic. They they definitely, definitely are. I, I think the, the point that really brought it home for me, the, the positioning of them being difficult, is the amount of runs that I've started to win with them by having my reformed floor set up on the bottom, the boss kills it, and then I reset it up on the middle, yeah. and the boss sells it again. <laughs> you do the walk up, mm -hmm. exactly. and it's getting stronger each time. Yeah, but I love that. The amount of times specifically, like I've hard blocked myself from being able to do that because I accidentally played units on the top floor. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. ruined my chances. It's one of the reasons why I eagerly take self damaging or self sacrifice cards. Um, Subsuming Blade can do it, but there's also the one Crushing Demise where mm -hmm. you blow up one of your own units. Sometimes it's actually the self unit kill that's most important. <laughs> like mm -hmm. you just need to clear a row because you've survived the waves and it's time to set up for the boss. Hey, do you want to kill the Forge Disciple as well by using a Subsuming Blade here? Or do we want to make sure this middle floor gets all of the slays by using a Subsuming Blade here and then Glimmer? Uh, well... <laughs> Actually, that Glimmer was always getting played on that floor anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I think... Let's Subsuming Blade up top. Let's stop the leak. I like that. Why take any mm -hmm. damage when you can take none damage instead? <laughs> That's right. I think the Restores go back on the top as well. Just to make sure that we least. have our winner, our winner up top. Yeah. Yeah, because like we've that. only got and, one wave remaining, so this is. And one at the bot, just to just and then like if we draw our lady, player behind, sure. it won't kill. It shouldn't kill. Yeah, so we get to take the two hits here. I mean, we can put the lady there. So we clash for it as well. Yeah, I, I kind of like that. And then we have, we could Glimmer. Oh, Vine Grasp does slightly too much damage here. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, we could Vine Grasp to get the guaranteed kill. Let's do the Glimmer thing. We need this <sighs> cash. Are we going to... I like to... playing out the Lady, right? I like it. Yeah, but are, are, are we going to... Because Lady and Wicklash go out at the same time if we're doing it, right? So Subsuming Blade also wants to go out for the Grow, so are we just taking the damage to the Dante's Candle? Um, What are we subsuming? Uh, bu -bu -bu. Honestly, so I, I pitched I think... the Sentient. Oh, I'm okay with that. I was going to suggest instead of the Wicklash, because we're 
I'm fairly confident that we'll be able to win up top, especially if we put a couple chumps in front. Mm -hmm. The other option was shiny steward up top, subsume it, and then just throw out the lady on the bottom. Mm. But I'm also very good with subsume the the sentient here. What would we draw? Uh, possibly a hand. Oh, maybe possibly energy. Handcraft. Yeah. If we draw molded, does that kind of jack with us? <laughs> Candle. <laughs> it did not work. Do we now want what to set this draw? up on the middle floor instead? Has someone it can stand behind? We are definitely drawing molded next turn. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. Easy. So I think we reform her in the mid row. She's done almost all of the damage to the boss as well, so we're, we're definitely yeah. fine here. Yeah. We should probably try and focus on making sure the Paraffin Thug can get the kill in some fashion. <laughs> yeah, and that's going to be some awkward math, but... Oh, we already got it. GG. GG. Uh, subsume... Mold something and subsume it? Yeah. Definitely. Oh, min maxed. Consider my min to also have oh, been maxed. Look at the money, though. It's so yeah. many. God, yeah, I really wish very we could loaded. take spreading spores. Can we not? It's Seraph the Chaste. I know, I know, I know. It'd be so good on a Paraffin Thug. Just build the Paraffin Thug up to kill everything by itself. This Sacrificial Resurrection is very good. Mmm. Okay, for removing the Dante's Candles and stuff yeah. from the deck? Yeah. That's that's a good pitch. I don't typically think about it in that way. But yeah, I'm, I'm down to do some deck thinning. To be honest, I often find this card to be very, very strong because in the worst case, it is a spell that says do, you know, 40-ish damage, and that also cleans up your deck. Mm -hmm. so, I think with Dante, happy with deck it. Done. we skip in. We, we Dante type Dante deck now. That's right. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Do we, so, uh, do we forsake it? <laughs> Are we, uh, what do you, what do you, what do you think? What do you think? So, hmm. The thing is, <laughs> unless it's Paraffin Thug in front of Big Sludge, mm -hmm. and it's not going to be that after we get Dante, which is just after the next fight, it's just mm -hmm. Herzl's. Yeah, I like the draw here too. There is the one downside of the Dante's Candles being things that will get more commonly in hand as a result of that, but also yeah. the Sacrificial Resurrection gets better and more capable of offsetting that as we get more well, draw. And you want more draw to because our deck is diluted, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we don't draw three blights out of five cards. We could go duper dead weight to make sure Dante's stronger. <laughs> How strong is your Dante? Oh man, my that Dante is, is Dante powerful. Has Dante Sh Dante stats? Surely that's not the play here. Surely no, we no. go get a couple removals and we yes. buff our sludge. Okay, good. I, I was pitching this one <laughs> too hard to... Oh, wow. <laughs> and did I think... Well, well, well. What have we here? Thornstone, huh? Ooh. I'm really scared. <laughs> we don't want to uh, have to deal with the large stone on the big sludge. It's no, good, it's but... too big. I mean, we could if we... If... Hmm. I don't want to do capacity gems, though. But Rhapsody, he's so big if you take this large stone. That's a big lad. Dante still fits behind that. What? Dante's one pip, right? Or is Dan Dante's, Dante's two? Dante's two. Dante's two. Oh, okay. Rail I mean, if Dante was one, one I would already click it. <laughs> right. Uh, I think it's a reroll. We're looking for the plus 25, and we're looking for multi-strike, and we're looking for quick. For other I have a, I have a habit of very, very aggressively taking large stone. Admittedly, mm -hmm. do you ever put large stone on anyone else? Lady of the house. Feels like she gets removed pretty soon. A steward. Steward. Ooh, I, I think we already have like oftentimes kind of a soft three floor plan, and as soon as we have Dante mm -hmm. in the deck, we have a three floor plan. So getting the mm -hmm. units out is going to be really hard at that point. I, I I can totally foresee a version of this run where we end up taking a pip. I'm serious. Pips are really, really helpful when playing around Melting Remnant. Okay, so if we were going to take a pip and we mm. were going to take this large stone, who would we place it on? Big Sludge? Well, Dante. 
Oh, yeah, Dante. <laughs> Dante wants this. Oh, if, um, if we had Dante in the deck already, yes, yeah. I would put the large stone yeah. on Dante. Yeah. 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 Ultimately, I think we've already got our stat stick covered, and we don't want to make Lady of the House bigger right now. Um, mm -hmm. You could put plus five, plus ten on that Lady of the House, and you wouldn't regret it. I think 40 50 is very reasonable. And then reroll. I, th you... I think that's where I'm leaning. Do you ever leave open the option to instead give her the burnout plus five plus five? Burnout plus five? Oh, burnout plus one and then plus five plus five. Yes, that's sorry. not bad. I, you know, who I really want that on? Dante. Mmm. Make him reform. To to get the reform chain started, yeah, yeah. But I think giving her plus one burnout would be very reasonable. Yeah, either either of those are fine, I think. Oh. There's the plus twenty five. That's I mean, good. if we're using yeah. the front line of this just goes here. Oh right? no, very agree. Very agree. Cool. We 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 want a body and this to protect also, all that rage. This is also an argument because this is after the big sludge gets a couple uh harvests, this is actually extra health. This is prevent yeah. the first damage from uh, first unit from hitting you. I think that this is very reasonable. I, I think trying to plan around getting multi from here is, is pretty greedy when mm. we can already get so much value with this, right? The multi is going to be through Dante in the back line. We just need a frontliner who yeah. can protect them. Yeah, agreed. Cool. Dig it. Do we ever consider uh, adding extra removals on top of the two we're about to do? Well, let's look what we want to cut, like, aggressively. Mm -hmm. I think we've already convinced ourselves that... We've got too many units to juggle. Yes. And I, I think I agree. This deck just has so little dead weight because we don't have very much stuff in it yet. Mm -hmm. You know? It's so interesting. I, I will say, in a vacuum, I would have not upgraded the Lady of the House and it would be one of my removes just for the sake of yeah. getting my other priority units faster. Yeah. But this is something I've been doing more and more at, at kind of all covenants is rolling units as stat sticks and then around ring six or seven considering removing them mm -hmm. just to smooth out the mid. It's here. Let's get explosive. It's time. It's time. It's time for boom. <laughs> so now I'm so we excited actually, for boom. I'm I am very, very keen on the boom. The problem mm -hmm. is now that we've included so many other cards, we really, really need to focus on card cuts. So like the Merchant mm -hmm. of Steel... Doesn't feel bad to actually go card cuts, go for this Merchant of Steel, go for more card cuts again. Yeah. Because we need to increase the density of the actual like, yeah, rejuvenator base in the deck. We just need to make sure we bankroll enough money to really fish for good upgrades for Dante next floor, right? Yes. That's the biggest thing. So we'll hold and do the removals Ooh. in the next. Spell shield. We do some spell damage, but the backline units have one damage themselves, so they're already going to die to the spikes on the Paraffin Thug. Yeah. Are we setting up Paraffin Thug row one this time? Yeah. I think so, too have to. I mean, slightly less card draw, but I think that's just the, it's got to be the play. Mm -hmm. I think we can get away without the card draw as well. And I could have gotten away with it too. <laughs> if it wasn't for you meddling winged. So then what? We give them a lady of the house to play with? We can do that. Makes it easy to kill the clip defender as it goes up. Yeah. And then like, throw this sentient on the top row. That's the question, right? We yeah. have to plan out where the big sludge is going to be as well. Yeah. <sighs> so if the big sludge is going to be on the top floor and the lady of the house is going to be on the bottom, or, or rather, sorry, if the, the sentient is going to be on the top floor, then the big sludge is definitely behind it. The lady of the house goes on the bottom floor. The paraffin thug goes behind, uh, or rather in front of it. And mm. then we're effectively just like these units, the clip defenders, as well as the 90 health units that will definitely make it to the top floor. We're just ideally killing them with restores consistently so that we can get the buffs on the harvest. That's kind of what I'm thinking is that sentient is a nice cleanup mechanism at the end. But if sentient's not getting hit, we won't always see the heal cards there. That's the mm -hmm. tricky bit, you know, and, and we could start to get heal damage right now. Uh, okay, so what is the problem with putting the sentient on the bottom floor instead and then waiting for the the other to play on the top floor, right? It robs us of the middle floor because mm -hmm. we get uh, they haste past us, but if we're not utilizing the middle floor, does it matter if we're robbed mm -hmm. of it? Yeah, the middle floor is just for the final boss, I think. I, I think the big thing is that we're trying to hold out to put the, the Slayer Paraffin Thug on the bottom, and I agree with that play. Mm-hmm. 
I think Paraffin Thug bot. But you could put Sentient behind the Paraffin Thug, and that wouldn't be horrible. And then that gives us cards this turn. That's a play. Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. So we're not using it for the draw past that point. Yeah, but it's just a it's just a shotgun that we can blast, and it would help us with boss damage in the end too. That's that's actually really good. I like that as well because we we was or rather I at the very least was stuck in the idea of thinking that this had mm -hmm. to be drawing entirely or not at all. But yeah. if it's on the top floor, it's never drawing at all in the ideal circumstance that we get to kill the frontliners, right? Uh, anyway, yeah. so might as well put it on the bottom. Good Do plan. that, and then that lets us blast this turn for 40, which sets up Lady of the House to get the kill on the top row, mm -hmm. and then maybe throw her a drag to help clean up the back line, like a drag and a shiny steward. We'll, we we can put both out because we'll get Subsuming Blade at some point. So we're just trying to increase we, the chance of getting to collect her. We will, but we won't get Big Sludge, uh, possibly. We will get mm -hmm. Big Sludge soon, mm -hmm. but we won't yeah. possibly get the Subsuming Blade before. So I don't know yeah. if the drag goes on that floor. I kind of want to put one in the middle floor just for the uh, possible collector. Yeah, I, mean, I, li I like I like having something in the middle for collector. I, I I definitely agree with that. Yeah, I think starting next round or the round after, we're gonna kill all the hasters because we'll have paraffin thug, and yep. so then the middle row actually matters again. Noise. That's oh, a yeah, them. that's an easy thugging right there. A drag uh, gets us one more kill on the top. Oh, right, because they're not dazed yet. Mm -hmm. My covenant is too low for you, Traveler. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot handle my C25s. I would heal the Sentient and blast that Frontliner. Uh, we're doing it with the Restore for the double hit? Yeah. Cool. I was even thinking about not playing the Candle, because then a second Restore right there gets us the kill. It might do, but we're definitely going to have the Harvest unit up on the top floor next turn. We kind of want to spread the love a little bit, because this is not going to yeah, yeah, be yeah. our kill floor. Oh, there's no doubt that I am tunnel visioning on this gold. Don't <laughs> don't think for a moment that I am contemplating anything other than getting gold out of these enemies. Look, one of us needs to optimize for that. <laughs> yes, uh, this I is agree. the problem I was worried about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... It can go mid-row. We're killing all the hasters. And, and honestly, mid-row might be safer because then we don't let the boss get three buffs. Okay. Okay, okay. Cool, 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 cool. cool. I, I like mm -hmm. that. I, I was hesitant to split these two up, but mm -hmm. I'm comfortable with it now. We'll put them back together. We'll subsume this train steward and we'll reform the lady. We've got so many options. This is why I love Melting Remnant. It's just incredibly complex. You want to talk about the class of the smoothening? Mm. Like, there is no class that marvelizes me more than, than Melting Remnant, but I love it. Let's get extremely fine grit sandpaper and just finish off the brain. Um, I don't think we actually even need to let that top floor do anything. I think we can just throw the candle. Yeah, I agree. Mm, but then Clip's Guardian gets past. Mm, so we would... We could Wicklash that steward. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, yeah. Fixes that problem real quick and then guarantees that they die, even if we can't subsume them. Ooh. Okay, they've got the guaranteed death. They can do more damage if we use the Glimmer on that floor, but actually, I think the Eclipse Guardian is now just leaking this one. And that's okay, because we have 100 health, yeah. We, we can afford five. to leak some. Yeah, it's totally fine. Um, want to burn a Dreg and a Dante's? Yeah, love that. Just popping that in the refuel, uh, refuel pool. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. Subsuming Blade was almost the bottom card of the deck. Oh, how much damage is left on the top one? Oh, it's pretty close. That's well, not far. Dang. Far. Yeah, dang. That's actually funny. That means that if we had, in fact, Wick lashed that steward, that we would have the Subsuming Blade here. Not that that is like a very big deal. Mm -hmm. Curious. Probably we're subsuming what that frontliner. And then that way the the sludge can hit the backliner. I'm thinking we reorganize them because this does no damage, mm. and then just right. throw the subsuming blade against it. Do as much. Just as do we some can. damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that strikes me as totally fine. I thought about maybe even wick lashing the sludge right there. 
Ooh. That's a bold play that I wouldn't make, but uh, <laughs> I'd like to see how it work out. I'm a bold operator. I mean, gosh. It's a, it's a big lad. It's very large, and I wish I could make it, but it feels like it's the lady of the house in front of the... Lady's certainly the safe option here, right? What are we looking to maximize now? We're looking to maximize our... We're looking to minimize our damage taken. Mm -hmm. That minimizes by five already. I guess the true minimize was Lady up top to get this frontline kill for however up, and that's safe. It's I'm I'm still locked in the idea. I know. Even though we no, keep talking hard. about it, you know what? Dazed on the top wall. You're gonna be glad that you didn't break your patterns when we get to C10. You know, mm -hmm. probably better to sometimes mistakenly play the placements the placements now than the alternative. Absolutely. I'm just gonna kind of rely on Smash. instincts here a bit here. Yeah, I think we got him. Oh, oh. draw that deck. <laughs> the largest draft. <laughs> it's kind of sweet. <laughs> Big. Go to the, go to the party. <laughs> party for one. Why was I born to die, draft? <laughs> you were born to die. Ooh, we. There are, uh, yeah. when do we end up with five health units? Literally like last area for the shade wings. So we don't need these yet. It's curious though, right? That pyre shards is like more slay. It is, but is the paraffin thug on its way out? I'm, I'm probably removing this thing on like ring seven or eight. <laughs> wow. I, I look at it. I like, love that cash. I'm committed. I, I love the money as well, but I look at it and I'm, I'm, I'm seeing like you, in order to make you continue working, I have to invest so much work into you. And we just saw we're not so ridiculously powerful. We're about to become it with the Dante. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Hmm. I think you can do more. If we get really good at juggling the sentient, that's the key. We have to get really good at juggling sentient. And then we made it. How many opportunities have you had to utilize the Votavary? Votavary is is both sh stronger than I initially thought it was, but also not busted. Mm -hmm. So Votavary frequently says, without it, like in a vacuum, right? Without without the right relics, yep, or I guess trinkets, it says chump block and trigger harvest, and trigger death effects too, like memories of the melted. Mm -hmm. And so you put this Votavary in front of that sludge. And it extends its health by 10 every turn in the end game against big enemies and also is empowering it, right? And then if you get the right stuff, like if you have extinguish effects occur twice, then it can start to become an engine. Mm -hmm. But without that engine, you know, this is certainly a card that scales really, really well with trinkets. Got the thing that gives you armor on extinguish? Votavary looks nice. Got the thing that gives you double extinguish? Votavary looks really nice. Um, and... If there's any unit to play it with, I would think that Big Sludge would be one. You need the space. Exactly. It's the it's the space requirement that often prevents me from taking a votivory because usually mm -hmm. I've got a plan for that entire floor. And that does happen because I don't take many capacity gems, but it's fine. This anyway. run this run could take a votivary and a capacity gem and it would sing. And that gives us a plan if we don't find large stone for Dante too, for what we would do with that space. If ever there were a time to see if you thought that this was cool, this would probably be it. Would it be? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and then if we get the cool relics later on. Uh, like, I, <laughs> it's I a great see... subsume target too, actually. You can subsume Vota very, very consistently. Whilst Every true, turn. while I look at the fact that we have a Herzl's compound and a Sentient that is often going to be the frontliner, mm -hmm. I feel like extra draw like th this is an extra draw as much as it is uh uh <laughs> one of the 10 cards in hand has to be a vote of it. i feel like uh, i feel like this is the the beginning of the intervention you know what i challenge you to take this vote of and then to take pip you should do this okay. this is good therapy i think yep because we can totally win it we can totally win it y and then we'll get to right. c25 and we'll only take draw because it's correct <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and that's looking fine. forward to it. <laughs> All right, Dante, how powerful do you get? 
Ooh, there's the burnout if we wanted to do it. We still do only have one molded in the entire deck, though, yeah. so it could be slow. Yeah, we need to, like, definitely keep on the removal train, right? Hey, we could put uh, burnout one plus five plus five on the votary. Have it guaranteed That's hilarious. Die every turn. That's actually a great play. Yeah, it's really strong. I like that. And, and I feel... And then you could consider putting health on it to make it chump even harder. Love it. But then but then we really, yeah, we, if we do that, we have to push our Subsuming Blade up because it's just barely too small to kill this. The Subsuming Blade. I guess blade it doesn't matter. It. It'll it'll get there, yeah, it'll get there. That Votaveri has a job now. Biggest Dante. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's our problem now. That's it's a seven big. capacity floor. I know, I know, I know. But I mean, that's the play. How are we going to deal with it? it? Well, it's not a seven capacity floor, right? It's, it's... Oh, can it's we cut Dante. the vertebrae now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying that for the next couple rings, this Dante wins by itself. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it? It's it's just like, the plus 10 as well, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Cool. Think so. Just making sure I don't do that without uh, any, any debate if on we, the subject. If we also take pips we could theoretically dupe this Dante as well. And then we would have <laughs> the, the Dante's floor. army. <laughs> the ideal floor. That's right. That's right. Th look, say what you want, but this is what peak Dante performance looks like. Two Dantes, That's right. both large stones on the same floor. Do we want more removals here? I do, Looking yeah. ahead. I what are we cutting? The first two. Is it? I think we keep all of the heal spells. Yes. Is it just dregs then? I think we can afford to cut some dregs. I think Votaveri is our drag. Votaveri is our end game drag now. Okay. You are the drag now. <laughs> and Subsuming Blade increasingly we might actually want to use to kill things because we're not always going to land killing mm -hmm. things, right? So it, it, killing your own units is like the meta scaling when you're already ahead. Yes. Um, but it's not always the end game plan. In the end game, you probably want your Subsuming Blade to hit things. Almost certainly. You'll have uh, any number of targets by that point mm -hmm. as well. It's also really good because like, as you get to the end and there are all the units in the front that have you know zero damage, but 15 health and 2000 armor, it just mm -hmm. says, kill those every single time, make a joke of that floor, you know, advance yeah. to win. <laughs> yeah. I think we can take this multi-strike yeah. because the scary ones are the stealth cloaks, but we have a few different options to kill them off. But they do they do 20 damage. Oh no, they don't. They mm -hmm. don't do 10 damage at this level. They do seven. Okay. Even better. You take 21 damage and we get uh 60 gold here. Are we just losing our paraffin thug this way? Hmm? No, they it dies. They, they all die. Oh, so they both die lives. in a single hit. You're right. Yeah, oh yeah. Love it. Okay. What is our where are we putting in this vote votive? Mm-hmm. Ain't that just the question, isn't it, right? Uh, it's got how much life? 31. 31. You know... It dies this we, round anyway. It dies this round anyway, right? We just put it anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's just... Are we putting... Where did Dante and the Sentient go? I don't think Sentient goes first floor this time because Stealth Cloaks tend to be in front of the beefy Harvester. Mm -hmm. We want Sentient to be set up somewhere to kill off the Harvester afterwards. So Sentient is going to be second or third floor. And we've got Rejuvenating Sweeper. So we want to make sure that our second floor... There will be some value in setting up higher to finish it off once the lifesteal has been consumed, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think we could put the Sentient second or third, and either would potentially work. Are we pairing it with the Sent... Uh, sorry, with the Dante, though? And putting it in front? Yes. I think... I think that's very reasonable. And then that means that we should put Big Sludge Row 2 with the Votaveri? Yes. Okay. And then top row is just our cleanup on aisle three. Mm -hmm. I think that this is great. Agreed. Lady of the House is becoming a second cycler. Yeah, I mean, I'm feeling more confident about my uh, assertion earlier that it needs to go. It it the time is coming. I think it's it's increasingly awkward. Although when we get pips, it could still be a relevant body. But the mm. the the choke on our priority units is the real problem, right? We just take some damage this turn. 
You could subsuming blade the the front one, I guess, if we're not going to kill it anyway. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. We pop the big sludge yeah. debris on this floor and then just subsuming okay. blade the front, take the damage. Do you ever wicklash someone here? No. I think mm. we're always playing out sludge, right? I can't see that resulting in uh, yeah. anything positive. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It begins the subsumption. <laughs> Get subsumped. <laughs> mm. I mean, that... blade makes us energy hungry. Oh, but we have pyro. That... This restore gets all of the health. I forgot about yeah. the Dante's cloak increase of magic power as well. Oh my gosh, we have so much MP now. Actually, the we subsuming have... blade kills the votaries as well now because of because, because of, the of the MP. That's awesome. <laughs> what is what we have four? So we're plus eight, plus three. We're plus eleven magic power. Mm -hmm. Stygian win. We're in the Stygian waiting room right now. You want to throw down another pyre shard in the bottom row just for the off chance that it like kills something? I'm trying to think. It doesn't <laughs> doesn't matter. I'm trying to think what it would kill. Just anything yeah. that lives and hits the uh, the paraffin thug two times would take twice as much damage, right? That's the best yeah. benefit from it. Yeah, it's not particularly great. We always want to be playing the Subsuming Blade. We probably always want to play Votaveri. Uh, and maybe maybe Subsuming here is, this is a non-kill turn. We just, oh, this one's going to die up top anyway, right? I guess we just Subsume, it, do we ever, do we Subsume the Votaveri? <laughs> my only reason not to Subsume the Votaveri would be the big sludge, not wanting to take the 10 damage this turn but is is that even relevant i don't think it matters right i think i think i think we can afford to just push this blade as mm. high as possible glimmers end up getting us all the heal we need mm -hmm. actually oh wait pie shots goes on the bottom i have no idea <laughs> can... yeah i kind of like this glimmer right yeah, we can get the kill this floor with get the, the harvest immediately yeah uh, and then she'll just pie grow on any floor Oh no, my draw. We can do, yeah, we saved. Nice. <laughs> oh, what do we have to mold? Nothing yet. Yeah, nothing. Ever, our That's only awkward. dead unit has reform. And sorry, uh, endless. <laughs> we got rid of our drags. You know, but it, the molded is gonna be Dante. I really believe that. I, I think Dante, Dante, um, if we, particularly if we can get holdover on molded, moldover, as mm -hmm. I like to call it, that's, that's in-game Dante. Right there. Then Subsuming Blade on you draws a card. Let's purge all of these. Yeah. Get out of here. All of that. Like draft. <laughs> Just another harvest on that block. Boom. Did I the not... Restore lets us get those both back kills. Yeah, we decided not to play the Pyre Shards. I think it was correct. I think it was very right. simple. I... I... Did forget that. Oops. Uh, is Lady going on the bot floor here to push some value? And then we do the subsuming votivary thing again? We can't. Hmm. Actually, no, we can do both, right? Let's do subsuming just goes mid floor. first. Oh, on this floor? What? On this floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, right, because the draw, the draw. Let's see. So just Lady on the bottom then? I think so. I don't see. I mean, I don't see any other plan. Just saps the life. Might as well get the run. value out of the snat stick. Mm -hmm. Then. Oh, paraffin thug. If we reform paraffin thug, we can maybe line this up to get the kill for the cash. Can't play it on this floor. Three pips. It's too big. Hmm. We can. <laughs> we can. <laughs> we can vine graph subsuming blade our sludge <laughs> to mold <laughs> to bring back paraffin thug. One turn only. The Paraffin Thug is going to have to do 615 damage. We've got a whole extra floor up top. We've got plenty of space. Are we killing space. them too? <laughs> I, I think this is just Votary subsume it and it's, it's we fine. let him go No, next. Yeah, we're good. We've got 520 gold. Anything beyond it is just baseless greed. Mm -hmm. But I do need it though. Good job, Sludge. This Sludge is a champion. It's doing real well. It doesn't even have the, the support of the Dante yet. Now, important question. Look closely at Big Sludge. Mm. Does... What is the name for a... A haberdasher? What's the name for a hat maker? Yes, a, uh, a hat maker and seller is a haberdasher. 
Do you think that Big Sludge shops with the same haberdasher as the slime boss? They as definitely slime do. Boss. You think so? Yeah. Well, no, because the thing is, you have to think about right the 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 morphology of a hat that would be able to sit atop a sentient mm. pile of sludge, or in another case, slime, uh, without sinking into it, right? The the, uh. the constituent properties of sludges and slimes that we've seen in many fantastical properties is that interaction mm. with them subsumes you inside of them. And yeah, yet, that's true. This hat has anti-sludge technology. It's always perfectly clean and perched atop of the slime pile. Exactly, and it's I kind know of incredible. that that is proprietary of Slime and Sludge Limited haberdasheries. Uh, mm. They're only found in the mm. Liverpool area. Liverpool a area. Liverpool. Yeah, Liverpool. For all of for all of the Liverpool slimes with enough income and time on their hand to go what? hat shopping. No, Teak. Come on, don't. What be you silly. just say they about Liverpool? Sport. They export oh, to okay, the world. Okay, okay, okay. It, it is right, specifically right. located in Liverpool, but I will say every city named Liverpool. So there's a Liverpool in America as well. I'm <laughs> certain of it. There's one there. There's one in every Australia as well. Oh man. But but slimes around the world are able to benefit, is what you're telling me. Yes. Yeah. So that's good. That makes me comfy. Precious plating. I like this precious plating. Do you? Are we threatened enough to take it? Or do we, like, you were already saying early, we really want money. I don't think we I'm... ever die in this run. So is this not just <laughs> 25 gold? Yeah, that's fair, man. It's so hard to turn down precious plating. It's just like options. But money. Watch. To... Watch we die to the Seraph. Just watch. I'm ready for it. Ooh. So. 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 What? are your thoughts here well i mean this is an awake to me yep that's a big old card it is that's a and we big old we're probably about color. to take pips so we do kind of like dense cards we could take another pyro and we'd be on five energy i do like the five energy i was feeling mm -hmm. a bit energy starved a couple times in that fight Mm-hmm. which is kind of cute that we would just build our whole energy like that this is a this is a, a little a meta a meta note by the way a peek behind the curtain the true secret strat of the content creator is to say so what are your thoughts first so that you don't have to have any thoughts yep brain you've, empty uh, you've cottoned onto my strat i'm gonna have to find <laughs> someone else to record the last week with now because uh, you've realized brain empty i just ask so and then after you answer i rephrase your answer back to you <laughs> Perfect. Perfect collaboration. I like this awake pick. I think it was... Ooh, you won't okay. go wrong. <laughs> I've got a pitch. Whoa. Okay. That remnant host sure says harvest three times on the same floor, don't it? It sure does. And that lets us put Big Sludge on a different floor than Dante. So Dante and Sentient can be buddy-buddy. Which means maybe we don't need a pip. Let's think We're about what we We're still taking pips. <laughs> no, because like... No, 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 no. Because like if the Big Sludge is on the floor with just a Remnant mm -hmm. Host and the Votivry as the two things activated, right? And the Sentient has a right. Dante of the Deceptive behind. We, like the Paffin Thug and the Lady of the House are now getting to the point that investing in them is no longer a priority for us. We're on floor five. You wanted to do it on floor seven to cut them. I wanted to cut them on floor three. Let's split the middle. Uh, we cut those two. We have those two standard <laughs> floors by themselves. Big Sludge <laughs> just gets really large. Dante's our kill floor with the Sentient and the Awakes. But you lose out on a lot of optionality. And, and this is one of the reasons, actually, real talk, and this mm. will matter more and more as we go up higher. But the I only have exactly one plan for how my floors have to go can frequently win. But it makes you really frail in the face of certain trials and bosses. So when your draw is just wrong and you need to break up a haster, sometimes you have to break your positioning. And it makes it harder to take advantage of molded and other reform effects, right? Mm -hmm. Having just a little bit of extra space means you can throw that remnant host on any of your floors, even if they have more space than you need. It lets you put down Votavari as a chump block to keep a unit alive when you don't draw your energy or your or your your heal, right? So I, I melting remnant. If there's any class that can take pips with no immediate plan to use them, it's Umbra and Melting Remnant. Mm -hmm. Those two classes can always find a way to take advantage of the pips. So I still like this Remnant host, and I still, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get there soon. We still have another boss to beat. We do. We do. This is an interesting, I think, uh, differentiating point between the two of us as players. And I think it's mm -hmm. also something that was evident in STS at the very start as well. Mm -hmm. and something that broke down over the course of SDS, and we'll see if it happens to break down over the course of this as well, yeah. that oftentimes I would have an ideal play 
of my deck in my mind and how it would account... Like, uh, sure, it would account for a lot of different fights as well, but I would have an idea of this is how the deck is going to be played and I am going to form the deck in any way that will allow that to happen. It's part of the reason that uh, removals are so, so yeah. definitely important to me at that point because thin decking is consistency and consistency is just execute your main strategy and win the game. Well, I, I think you like to build engines. You're an engine builder. Definitely, definitely am. And in this circumstance, I am also an engine builder. Like, as soon as I saw that we could do Big Sludge with those two, the Sentient and the Deceptive, like, yeah, my heart is, like, hard set on that. And I'm trying yeah. to fight against that because I recognize, like, in the higher ascensions, you higher ascensions, higher covenants in this circumstance. <laughs> but uh, they're similar, right? It's a similar thing. Your need for adaptability and optionality increases yes. as the game gets more difficult. And I think I'm definitely rigid. I, I'm definitely rigid yeah. when we get to that point. So Well, in some ways, you know, so that's that's maybe, and I like this right side, by the way. Yeah, it has to be. We have no upgrades anymore. And we can find some great dupe here based on whatever artifact this is. Curse Vines, crazy delicious. What? What? No, that's just, oh, okay. just a reference. Oh, I like the winged <laughs> indulgence here. I... <laughs> There's actually something I, I, I did want to say about uh, Cursed Vines, and that is, like, yes, in all roguelikes slash lights, uh, there are whips, right? There's there's things that mm -hmm. pad out so that not every relic is great. Uh, you want a differential uh, scale of everything. You don't want everything to be evenly balanced, because then all of them just say, you know, uh, the exact same thing, like gain plus one damage every turn or yeah. some stuff, like, right? Yeah. Uh, but this one... I've never found a single circumstance where I want to have it. I think Cursed Vines is your answer when you failed to get to backliners to kill them. But then it's a questionable whether you survived long enough to get the Cursed Vines. Uh huh. But it's also it's kind of weird. It's, it's so, so important to kill backliners. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's only half the time, right? So I don't think it's awful. I've I've taken it and been like, oh, neat. I put an Absolver up front again. That's mm -hmm. really useful. I kill them and I don't get a blight. Um, or purifier, but I, I think that there are better options. And if you are at a higher covenant and you're not building with a plan for how you're going to kill backliners, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I agree. It's it's an awkward one. It, it can't like when it does what you want it to do, you are already in deep deep trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's well put. Yeah. Uh, I think here it's the cut on the double Wicklash. I think we're no longer scaling the Dante the Deceptive with that. We're using the regen scaling on the Sentient as well as the damage scaling on the Big Sludge. Mm -hmm. I like that. I do. I do. It simplifies our deck. If anything's going to kill us in the end game, it's going to be splitting ourselves in half, right? Yeah. Trying to do too many strategies. And Wicklash was one that was going to be potentially really good, but this will be good enough. And if we put Dante potentially set up second floor, mm -hmm. which might happen, right? We've got like... Sludge and Votaveri's first floor and Dante and Sentient second, then we still have the chance to reform. And I don't think we cut reform. I don't want to cut reform, but it's because of the remnant host that I don't want to cut it. Do you want a second Dante? <gasps> My inflexibility is happening. <laughs> you know what? I just I want to say this. Here's an alternate way to put it. You have said I my play my engine building is inflexible and you're more adaptable but the pessimist way is that my play style is lazier because <laughs> if I, I am building true. towards the high optionality of having pips that's saying I haven't solved everything yet and I'm not going to solve everything but, so I'm just no, keeping my options open no 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 you're kicking the bucket down the line for when you have to solve it you still have to solve it with the tools that you have in each right. individual fight mine right, is right. even lazier I solve it <laughs> once, and then I just get better at utilizing that solution. <laughs> you just keep making the hammer so big, and <laughs> everything is a nail. But that's a haberdasher. Quit hammering that haberdasher. I mean, look. If you saw the haberdasher, you'd understand. <laughs> I, I, I gotta say, there is a part of me that just wants to dupe the pyre, grow, and go. Just have extra energy here. I'm also not you against- You can dupe this ingraft. Engraft is good, definitely. Engraft is kind of like having the pyre grow, and it also is kind of like draw scaling in a way. Mm -hmm. And we have explosive now. I really like that dupe, actually. Okay, I, I'm, I'm sold on the Engraft dupe. Now my question is, 
is there any other dupe that we consider in a different circumstance? Like, oh, I don't know, yeah. maybe we're taking Herzl's instead of capacity, not Herzl's, Herzl's draw, instead uh, taking the Ember instead of the capacity mm. and then like duping Awake. I think Awake is a very reasonable dupe. I wish that we had like an upgrade on it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I, I honestly do like da duping Dante, but I think Ingraft is a really flexible dupe. Okay. And it's damage too. That's the thing. If if this ingraft were just an ingraft and we didn't have an explosive sentient, that's a very different run. <sighs> Look at this floor. Yeah, we're stacked. We stack is going to be very a, precise. We have to keep up a merchant of magic for it, but we still get one in the final area and more double removal. Okay, hang on. Oh my God. There's double removal here, double removal here, but we what just we had a bit cutting? of difficulty cutting. Exactly. I know. I know. It's actually getting out of control. We, there's a good chance we cut this pyre shards, and I do think by the end we're cutting some of these priority units, and I'm cool with that. So that gives us four of our cuts? Mm-hmm. That's plenty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we might want to cut uh, Vine Grasp if we don't think it's going to perform anything in the final fight. Mm. Okay, I can see this. Let's go for the fell. To the fell. Mm -hmm. And here is Rage Fell, one of the scariest fights in the game, back yes. again. This So this gets super terrifying, especially in the Covenant 25, because you've got the mm -hmm. Alabaster Guardians in the front line with their 70 block, and then you've got the Clipped Guardian here, which is 105 mm -hmm. at that point, right? Yeah. And if the fell wants to, it can just follow this Clipped Guardian the entire way up, and then it goes mm -hmm. to the top floor with, what, 15 damage, and it just hits you, takes hits. Did we takes. talk about this last time, too? Did we have Ragefell last week as well? I don't know if we had Ragefell last week, but I or definitely we just talked, talked about with it. you yeah. about this last week, but it might have been off camera as well. <laughs> That's so funny. It's it all, you know, but it's, we have a lot of video games in us, man. Mm. It's a lot of video game in there. So I think the Sentient and Dante go down, and then we just consume everything else. Well, no, we play the molded and then consume everything else. Where are we getting our money? Who are we mugging and where? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't think any consideration uh, does sentient Dante row two, sentient or is that too bold? And then like Lady of the House bot row to to weaken up this this alabaster guardian with the plan of thug. So the incoming is okay. So yeah, it would get the hit, and the thug goes down on the bottom line. Hmm. How a long thought. is the thug gonna be able to survive by itself? I guess if there's maybe no not rage very long. Floor. Yeah. But how long does it have to before we feel comfortable? Actually, no, no, no. Let's think about this, right? Assume mm -hmm. the bottom floor does not exist right now. Mm -hmm. And we're using Sentient, Dante, and Big Sludge, Votivri, and Remnant Hosts as our building units. Mm -hmm. Does that win? Yes, I right? think so. I think so. Yeah. I think so. So we might as well get a couple kills with this lay, right? Exactly. It's just free money. And Big Sludge up top gets more time to scale with the harvests on the, on the Remnant. Definitely agreed. And then throw the molded sacrificial resurrection to get the dead weight out. I'm, I'm throwing the molded so that I'll have the ability to reform the remnant host later. It's possible that's not a good play. I agree with, I I, I think we want to keep the molded. I, I agree. Too spooky. It's okay, we've got a draft now. Like I said, worst case, you've got a basically a damage spell. Mm -hmm. Could certainly be a hell of a lot worse. Uh, uh, yeah, I did, uh, there, there, there will just structurally there will have to be turns that I do not ask about over the course of this. I'm starting to try and uh, yes. figure out when. Yep. No, but you, this is part of the fun, right? It's a new game, new perspective. I think we're getting it. I think we're getting the pacing. Mm -hmm. I think Monster Train, so for what it's worth on the stream side, when I play Slay the Spire, I tend to be very comfortable reading and interacting with chat and strategies in chat in the middle of fights. And that's partly because I have 2,400 hours of playtime in Slay the Spire, so that's a comfortable thing for me to do. It's a practice thing, it's familiarity. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also partly because the kind of density of decisions and the surface of decisions in Spire is different than Monster Train. Mm. When, when I play the fights in Monster Train, I pretty much don't look at chat for the whole time. Yeah because Monster Train asks you not only to think about your draw, your strategy, and your energy, and your enemy's moves like in Slay the Spire, but it asks for this extra dimension of units across three floors. And it's just, it, the little difference makes a huge difference in how much you need to keep in your head. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think it's really dense. It's really dense. So I totally respect needing to kind of tunnel in or make some decisions by yourself 
because I'm 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 still watching. I'm co-piloting. Yeah, that that's a really good point. Like specifically something that I wanted to talk about over the course of this, and I think we'll be talking about it in a couple other circumstances as well because of how important it is. Is mm. the draw, uh, not the draw, sorry, but the uh, the decision density in this game compared to other deck builders. Mm -hmm. um, in specific, like the out of combat one as well is like so many decisions get made in such a short period of time every yes. time you visit a ring. Mm -hmm. And time. those are decisions that are easy to discuss, right? Because in the ring, we can talk about the two options, we can talk about the shop, because we don't have to keep so much in our head at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's just fights to where you need to keep all of your hand, all of your energy, all of your plans, and all of the rows, and all of the upcoming enemy actions. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to keep in your head. Huge amount of mental overhead. Mm-hmm. I mean, these these are all like the power from thug has actually gotten a huge amount so far. If I did if I did fifty two here, we actually get twenty more gold as well. That's pretty sweet, and that's this this piercing is, or rather, this subsuming blade is pretty strong. We're on ring six. Yeah, it really doesn't need much scaling at all here. Do you want to throw an awake down on the power from thug? <laughs> no, it's dumb, right? We've only got two oh, two waves left. Yeah, yeah, I think two we waves. We need to start building the sentient. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I I look I. If it helps, I feel sad that that's the case. Mm -hmm. It is time for Engraft Spam. Okay. I mean, Engrafts don't even have to happen on that floor, so we do get the free yeah. heals down here. That is one thing. Mm -hmm. With the Dante's Cloak, it's not an insignificant heal as it typically is. We don't need the big heal cards. Our small heal cards are big heal cards. We just need the regen, right? That's why Awake was so good. It's not the big heal number. Let's just pop some extra damage down here on the bottom floor for funsies. Might as well go ham. Oh, it still creates a draft. <laughs> it does. It does. All the cards are pluses. Yeah. I really think that card's good, man. If you're sleeping on that card, it's it's it it's I, yeah, it's yeah, one of those cards that I can just usually just put in the deck, and that's mm -hmm. cool because most most cards you need to ask yourself, do I really have the support structure for this? Yep. But certain cards are just tempo. And Sacrificial Resurrection is one of those. Another one that I struggle with too, but is really good tempo is Gifts for a Guard. That's that, the Stygian card that draws and makes them consume. I just broke out of my struggle with that like a couple week, uh, couple weeks. Really? No, a couple months ago, actually. Just after the Friends yeah. and Foes released, I broke out of that. Yeah, it's really good tempo. It is. It's, it's just like, especially in, obviously, because it's always in a Stygian deck. And I tend to run the majority of my Stygian decks as, as an incant deck. Like mm -hmm. there are other ways to to play Stygian, and obviously mm -hmm. you can lean on your other class to try and accomplish this scaling. But it really feels like that's my scaling defense and my scaling offense and my utility all in one. So <laughs> yeah. I almost always do that. It tends to be pretty strong, and the attunement changes make it easier to manage your front loaded damage too. Definitely, like Titan's Titan's Gratitude is a whole different card than it used to be now. It is ridiculous. I'm also that really, really whole glad card. that Titan's Tooth was moved to uh, Uncommon rather than Common. Yeah. Like, you never wanted more than, or at least in my position, I never wanted more than one. You just get the one and you're pretty good, right? Ooh. So, Intent on Death is one of the most breakable cards in this game. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's very, very, very cool. And there's a reason why it used to cost zero and be uncommon, and now it costs two and it's rare. Yep. And that reason <laughs> so... is named Lil Fade. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and we can already use it. Like, we can hit the Votaberry with this, and it becomes like a weird kind of draw thing. And if we do get double extinguish, it could be a thing. But honestly, this is not the world's strongest intent on death. What I like is that Endless Pack. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I will say my like my look at that intent on death is two more harvests from the remnant host. Yeah, that's not bad, actually. But my also, uh, my remnant pack looked is, is also just... two more harvests on the remnant. <laughs> yeah. Use it repeatedly, yeah. right? Yep, yep, yep. This may give us the ability to cut molded from the deck later. Mm-hmm. And if we're doing that, here it is, the decision point. Here it is. Okay, actually, how about this? Uh, we each have 10 points to spend. I want you okay. to allocate them across the board. Your most valuable, obviously, would be the one that you invest the most in. So for my case, it would be like, if in a normal run, it would be 10 to Herzl, zero, zero. <laughs> <laughs> 
But uh, <laughs> but I, I want you to have like a number across the board in mind. I'm gonna try and do that as well. Cause maybe we can find a middle ground that we're both happy with. I've got mine. What are our cuts? Cutting four things? Yes. Uh, I my pitch is Paraffin Thug, Lady of the House, the Pyre Shards, as well as maybe a Glimmer, maybe the Vine Grasp. Okay. Maybe Sacri No, no, I want to use Sacrificial to get the Dante's Candles yeah. out. Yeah, no, it's Glimmer or Vine Grasp. And can I can I see the units one more time? I, just the ones we're playing. The Sentient two pip, the Big Sludge three pip, Dante the Deceptive three pip, and then two one pips in the Remnant Host and the Votivary if we do the cuts that I suggested. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I've got mine as well. Um, cool. I'll, I'll pitch mine first because I, I think I've been like pretty, pretty gung-ho about it. It's sure. two Fels Remorse, seven Herzl's Compound, one Light of the Seraph. Interesting. I've got zero in fells here, probably. Mm -hmm. I could see one or two because of the potential to pick up other expensive cards later and use them. And to the simplicity on the early turns when we're trying to play Big Sludge and Co. Yep. It does. It improves our first like two turns. Um, I, I have a fair bit in Light of the Seraph here still. To be honest, Herzl's Compound and Light of the Seraph both win here. Mm -hmm. But what Light of the Seraph lets us do specifically is if we're taking the cuts you suggested, which I like, but we're keeping molded, then we get to have Dante walk twice. The problem is, how do we actually extend any burnout when we reform? We cut all that. We yeah. don't really have a plan for that, right? And so having reform as a plan for end damage against a Seraph is only really good if we're doing it multiple times to where that final burnout number is big. Mm -hmm. And so especially with the ingraft dupe the deck that we have built it wants draw now i it will say draw. here there was a moment as we were doing the dupe and mm -hmm. uh you suggested engrafts and i very quickly leapt on it uh and then <laughs> afterwards you clarified oh dante is also a possibility and i'm like <laughs> i do believe we just decided to go for draw <laughs> <laughs> yep uh so th there was like th there was we, a point we kind of I... cut some of our options right like the wick the wick lash was the way to keep pip as as the potential option I, but i think they needed to be cut still i think i think i part agree of the i think part of the mm -hmm. split here is deciding where our scaling is really coming from and i'm saying mm -hmm. it's from the big sludge and the sentient and dante is just there to help clean up after the sentient as well as be a powerful yeah. unit but yeah. i think you're looking at dante and going this is a dante run right or more right, so or I how am. can I how can I take advantage of it? Because multi attacking is very breakable in this game. Yes, right. So no, it's it, you know, and and I'm not actually disappointed. I just like to play the game. I don't. I'm always going to try to take the thing I think is strongest. But I'd like to show you more opportunities to take the other stuff. So these mold braces are cool. Yep, I love the opportunities to take other stuff. There's also an encased amber here, which is five. Uh, I mean, if we put the remnant host under, like mm -hmm. it's five every mm -hmm. turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like both of those. And that lets us actually play our candles while they're in there. And it lets us take more expensive stuff later. Split Anvil doesn't look awful with the Awake not yet upgraded. It's true. Although, I think we've pretty much got it covered. Mm -hmm. I really like these left two. I do. I'm happy with them. And we have enough money left after that to reroll and look. Do we really want the Encased Ember, though? Honestly, I don't think that it's immensely impactful especially when sacrificial resurrection cleans the deck up a bit mm -hmm. okay. um let's go but like Roll. what it lets us do is if we get an x cost in particular right if we pick up say stygian or like a awoken rail spike which is very unlikely yeah we've got one fight that's <laughs> rare but if it did happen we have just empowered it but yeah it's i i think you could go mold reroll, and then that saves us more for other good stuff Yo, are we about to get to use that? Uh, we have to use that now. We're not going to this unstable vortex anymore. We'll pay for removals over on this side. It's too important. I Dante miss my pips. Sludge. We need pips. <laughs> Larger Dante. <laughs> Give me back the pip. I, was, I want the pips. <laughs> no, was, It was never draw. It was always pip. <laughs> 
Send it back. Restart. All right. Well, this I'll... is not live, right? We're recording this. Edit. Edit You're right. this. Cheat. Sorry. Cheat, Rhapsody. Cheat. Cheat for the people. I'm going to have to go and do that. Uh, but before I go and do that, <laughs> Lady of the House and Paraffin Thug out of here. They're not going to be able to kill any units in the next fight. Without investing scaling into them, at least, I don't believe. Yeah, that's fine. Because we're... Because we're gonna we're gonna dupe a unit next floor. We're just gonna dupe it. Okay, so here's what we need. This has the awoken offering of uh, descending retreat or restoring retreat. Oh, nice. I like this. The fades first blade is kind of cute, but it's like, is it good? I fades first blade is really good. I have had so many runs where I've just had a paraffin, uh, paraffin thug, not paraffin thug, sorry, mm -hmm. the uh, paraffin enforcer, uh, mm -hmm. given it multi strike, just put burnout on it and given it quick, or just oh, given it quick or some such, and just have it ruin the entire floor by itself. And fades, fades first, first blade, blade gives you rage when your burnout ticks, right? Yes. Okay, no, no, I've seen this gotten totally broken because yeah. fun fact, fun fact, I learned this. Um, if you cleanse your burnout, with the debuff removing mm. card that we skipped a second ago, you get all the rage. Yeah, I was told that last time I turned that down. Yeah, it's kind of wild. I don't think damage matters to us at all. We just no, take it. We will, we will obliterate the enemy with our cards. Our deck has no pathetic cards. That Ooh. toolbox turn. That glimmer looks good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would just do it. The question is, is there ever a circumstance that big oh. sludge is on the bottom floor and benefits wait, wait, from wait. a bunch of harvests? Yep. Check this out. Mm. There is. You play out the Votavary, and it eats all the wilt wing damage. Mm -hmm. And then you and then you do the glimmer. Okay. And I love that play. So who's the big sludge ultimately standing behind? At that or point, then maybe Sentient goes in front. Does it, or do we put Sentient Dante on the next floor, and then we've got the Votivary constantly just for the chump block here, and we wait for our endless remnant? That works. I like that. Okay. Sure. I really like this play. I do I do miss how much money Paraffin Thug made us. How mm -hmm. much money did Paraffin Thug make us in this run? It must be easily 500 gold? Easily. I, I, I'm going to uh, put out the official question, because I know that someone will answer it. If anyone okay. knows the amount of money that it contributed over the course of the run, we would just love to know. Because <laughs> it, it paid for yeah. so many of the upgrades. Like, everything has the double upgrades. Mm -hmm. We've got a pretty wild amount of relics. Like, I've not uncommonly yep. made it to the end with just my start relic and then two boss relics. Yep, yep. For what it's worth, I think that... Uh, so I've seen a lot of people struggle with Melting Remnant. I do think that Melting Remnant is at least partly balanced around this fact. Um, the idea that you might be able to make quite a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, do we keep rising subsuming blade? Like we could kill the Votavari too, I guess, but then we're taking damage. Yeah, it doesn't need to rise anymore. I don't believe. Yeah, probably good enough, right? Oh, but yeah, I think I think melting remnant. I mean, it really it wants you to play into some money so that you can roll more trinkets and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's worth at least trying, you know, if you're if you're a player who's playing Melting Remnant and you're struggling with it, but you're not trying to take advantage of money gaining stuff, just try. It's a lot of micro, but maybe it makes all the difference. Do we want to take a 1 in 11 to draw the Remnant host with the Remnant pack we have in hand? That's... It could hit a Glimmer as well, and Glimmer's also quite good in this situation. The Sacrificial Resurrection is pretty good as well with the double Dante's Candles in hand. There's actually like a fair few good hits. Yeah, here. that's not bad. All right, we'll do it this time. Pyre grow. Very similar idea. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sad about that. You know what we could do? We could What's put that? the Remnant Pact on the Sludge. We would lose our Rage, but it would let us reset them. Does that... Do we care? I think with the uh, the Votivary coming down every turn and only dying when we want it to, mm -hmm. that when that big Sludge dies, it will have accomplished everything it needs to. Yeah. So maybe this is just like Awake or Restore Pyrogrow Dante's Dante's up top? Yeah, I think it's that. Okay. 
We probably don't need to leak that damage, so I like it. <sighs> Remnant host, please. <laughs> hmm. Do we ever pyre shards the remnant here? Sorry, the the vertebrae. That is an application, so it doesn't come back, right? It won't come back, no. It's not but it will kill it. some of these. That's yeah, it'll probably, it seems kill all of them. Seems good. Well, it won't kill all of them because then when they die, they explode, right? 12, 22. Sure, but this is quick. So the first one dies to the big sludge. Ooh. Okay. I like it. I mean, we want to play it. We want to get it out of the way. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Do we use the vine grass to bring the gilded wing forward? So that the big sludge actually hits something impactful and then the votivory kills all the... Uh, no, wait, because then the gilded wing hits the votivory. Never mind. Well, there's still a potential here because we've also got a subsuming blade. So we can still chump by subsuming one of them and then vine grasping one of them and mm -hmm. then that leaves the votivary to kill the last with pyre shards so you kind of get the best of both worlds well the last doesn't die to the pyre shards again because the big sludge quick oh my gosh quick is impossible for me to remember hmm okay it is okay you want to pull you want to pull the gilded wing yeah right Wait, 15, I think it's all right. uh, this is 5, so 17, 15, 17 is 32, so... Yeah, actually, no, I don't want to do it. I kind of just want to leave it here. Okay. Just get one of these. Sure, I like that mid-row mid cleanup, yeah. Oh, We're going to need to stack some healing up top. We're all good. I we say need to. Yeah. And now the host is here. It's time for hosting. Let's do. Oh no, there's no. It's fine because they die. I can do. Yeah. Uh, wait. Yeah, the front one already dies before it's burnout, so we put the remnant host mm -hmm. in front here. Mm -hmm. Everything's gonna die. Oh, I see. I see. The remnant host itself needs to die. Yes, you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. If the remnant host doesn't, you can subsume the remnant host right now, and and then mold it. Where is the benefit from that? Like, I, I get it in the molded pool, I pull it back out, I put it on this floor. It's that you have it in the deck? Question mark? You make a good point. What about this? Hmm. Subsume the votivary to draw a card. Draw remnant To pact. maybe put remnant pact on the host and otherwise to just get a sacrificial resurrection here. This worked out really well. Mm. Just mold it and then burn the two. I like that. Don't have to be able to play the draft. I'd prefer to have a draft in the deck than those two Dante's candles. <laughs> yeah, draft doesn't hurt me. Draft is my friend. Mm -hmm. Now, plus two magic power for e in your fight. Yeah, so it, it doesn't downgrade over the course of removing any of them, right? It doesn't seem like it is, which is pretty mm -hmm. cool. It's interesting because I don't... Does Dante work that way? Dante doesn't... cares about what's in your deck in the beginning, right? Yes. When you play. So Dante is weird in that when played, gain a stack of multi-strike for every mm -hmm. uh, black card in your deck. Apparently, I've had conflicting information told to me about whether or not this counts as a summon ability. It's not anymore, so it used to be. That's why it's conflicting. It used to be a summon ability, which means that Ashes could, like, totally bust Dante. I've been told um, it very recently, though. Like, since that mm, change. You know, I mean, things break in updates. As far as I know, that that, that was purposefully removed. Okay. And that it's no longer a summon ability. But you know what? This is a game that changes very quickly, right? So, mm -hmm. totally, totally could have gone back, and maybe not even on purpose. What I do know is that that makes Dante really cool when you're fighting Seraph the Diligent. We did it. We got the molded, and now we get the remnant host and the remnant back. Nice. That's literally nice. why I did that draw. It's perfect, and we've got the burnout too, which means it's always dying no matter what. Yes. It has happened. Dante's candle out there. Right, because Seraph the Diligent adds what? Two, three vengeful shards? Two or three, right? Three. And those are blights. Mm-hmm. Dante be loves that. Uh, 
right. How are no. you feeling about these bracers? Uh, I'm feeling like I forgot about it, and I should be putting these in the back line. Oopsie dopsie. I'm feeling quite good about them in general, though. Um, I yeah. find oftentimes I end up misplaying them, though. It's 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 a little tricky to play around, but even with the misplay, I mean, you've almost doubled Sludge's health already. That's that's a good outcome. Could certainly be worse. Yep. Look at that. I could have scaled the subsuming blade there, but it's we're in the end stroke. It's fine. I think it's totally okay to you know push for the finish. Do you want preserved thorns? Do we? It's so, more card draw. I thought that was the best. With the double card draw from the <laughs> Hursel's compound. I mean, card draw is the best, and I do like uh, Preserve Thorns a lot, but it feels like mm -hmm. we're going to be on 10 cards relatively commonly. And I don't want any so of those you, to be stings over. So you want another ingraft for um, more explosions. I don't even know if I... Well, I, that, that does increase the density of the Rejuvenate triggers. I can see my way mm -hmm. to that, certainly. I think one of those two cards is better than skip 10, honestly. Okay. Well, we found a next cost card, so you're right. <laughs> I can't believe we actually found it. Devourer. Do you want to put a devourer in this deck? But where is it's it going to go? one pip. It goes with that extra pip that we got from the boss reward. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to... It's going to go in that extra pip. Just <laughs> straight... To the trade to the bin, <laughs> directly to the bin. Endless, endless. Uh, Actually, that's relevant. We can yeah. guarantee the endless on the host. We could, but we really also want to find. I mean, we can use the subsuming blade to kill it each turn if we desperately need to. You know to. where endless can be good? Hmm. Is on a Dante. Like so, what I mean is, we put endless. The, we put the upgrade, the enhancement endless on the the host, and then we use the the card. To put endless on a Dante mm -hmm. so that Dante gets two floors against the Sarah. It's what we wanted to do with the burnout mold, but with no risk of just dying. Since we didn't take debuff removal at least. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We 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 have a problem. Mm. What's our bottom floor? Because if Every it's sentient. Floor is Dante. We we can make two floors Dante at the maximum right now. But mm -hmm. if uh, if the bottom floor is a Dante floor, it's not the big sludge floor, which really limits the big sludge's access to that uh, harvest. Like, we mm. can harvest on other floors because of the votivery and the remnant host, mm -hmm. but that big sludge could get real if we set up on the bottom floor. Yeah, yeah. I like that. And then... And... Yeah, I think that's the plan. Dante can still have two floors. Yeah. Middle and top. But if Dante has middle and top as its floors, then we're not like resetting a Dante to put to the top floor ever. So the endless on it really doesn't matter past that point. Oh, I was saying we this the remnant pact keeps us from even having to dupe the Dante. Maybe we get to dupe something else. Oh, let's look at what our relics are and stuff. We've got a lot of options here. There's a lot I mean, of directions that we can go. Hell's Banner is all the energy we possibly ever need. We play yeah, two right. endless units a turn forever. Yep, I like that. So take that roll. I don't really I think care so. about the rest of these. I think so. Yeah. Cool. Yo. That's our ability to put burnout on the remnant host. Yeah. <gasps> Do you like this resin block? Um, It buffs the remnant host and the votivory. It buffs the votivory. You know what it also does? It What's turns that? those drafts into kind of monsters. But do we ever play the draft before we end the fight? We just kind of mold it every once in a while. Okay. It's so weird for me to be on a melting remnant run where I'm looking at this resin block and I'm not absolutely incredibly excited about it because it's usually one of the strongest things available to you. Mm -hmm. I guess we're supposed to be awoken primary, but I think we've kind of played into our outs, especially with Chaste, you know? Definitely. I like melting spout here for sure. I think that's super cute. This didn't used to have burnout attached to it, and so it could actually be a problem at Lower Covenants. Yeah. I lost a run. I lost a run where I took the old version of this because it made the tomb so powerful that in the Seraph fight, it didn't die, yeah. which I, surprised me because that will not happen at C25. I, but at I C1, was, 
Yeah. I was there for that run, actually. Oh, you saw it? Yeah. That's, yeah. I was, I was going to bring that up if you hadn't. Mm -hmm. Not I lost the, the whole run aspect of it, but that it has caused problems in the past due to that. I'm so glad it mm -hmm. has burnt out one on it now. It's perfect. It's the perfect answer. It just makes it a consistent jump block without the downside of maybe not dying. Mm -hmm. Now, we could just get plus 50 damage on Dante right now. Yeah, that's true. That's pretty friggin' good, right? No major downside there. I think I like it. We could even plus 25 the Votivry and still kill it with the Subsuming Blade when we want to. That's pretty amazing, Although, isn't it? Although, with the Votivry and the Remnant Host, like, are they ever getting through all of the health? No, but that's great. That means that Big Sludge is guaranteed all of its health at the end, right? That's perfect. I like the 25. We should do it. Sure, but is it not already guaranteed all of itself? I'm happy to do this. Oh, I see what you're saying. And Seraph the Chaste. So Seraph the Chaste is clearing our buffs and mm -hmm. has Ember Drain, right? So we've got Sweepers. Um, But the waves are not that scary. If this were Seraph the Temperant and it were C25, then this plus 25 is very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In that case, you know what we might do is yep. put the Heartstone on the host and then that way we can always put votivary back to make sure we maximize the effect of our mold our braces okay so let's let's talk about the braces for a second right so if the mm -hmm. remnant hosts uh the remnant host dies oh. due to being hit mm -hmm. then the drafts are summoned and they hit their burnout but if the remnant host dies to its burnout it summons the drafts and they don't trigger the burnout right because there's one burnout phase Mm, this is weird, isn't it? So we want and with this two to of die. them, we wanted to die, and we, in a really perfect world, we want the drafts to then be in the back so that they both apply to the big sludge. Mm -hmm. But that's going to be hard to do because we want this thing to be the thing that dies. No, that's that's not impossible. It's just the votivory mm -hmm. goes out front, the remnant host goes in the back line, mm -hmm. and then we uh, earmark the subsuming blade for it every single time. Yep. Yep. So does that re-encourage us to put health on the Votivary so that it can always take the full round? Yes, it does. You're right. I don't know what the numbers are at this covenant, to be totally honest. Quick Dante. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish we could make it a quick Dante at the moment, but honestly, I don't really think it matters. I think we could put plus 10 damage on this remnant host and it'll just be spiteful. And it'll like kill off one purifier or something. We'll we'll try and do removals before. Oh, just in do case. you want to put a spikes on this big sludge? It's it's relevant to the boss actually. It's not terrible. It's probably better than plus ten damage. It's twelve damage around. Oh, but it gets cleared. Never mind. It's nonsense. It does get? It doesn't cleared. matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, without an extra source on it. I I, mm. I was I was thinking about it. Um. The Strength Stone does feel better on it, though, if we're going to be yeah. doing anything. But let's look I for agree. a possible dupe. And um, like, I, I think we give up on these relics. I think we're just using a purge and dupe now. Yeah. Root Split is a maybe. Is anything ever getting past the Dante set up on the top floor? I mean, I hope not. I don't think so. It's uh, 190 damage it does at the moment. Yeah, that's pretty good. And the sentient, like we we've ignored it, but we've got the end graphs and the. the it's going to be a ton of damage. Yep. It's really going to be a lot of damage. No doubt. So are we duping speaking. Dante? <laughs> are we? Or what are the big threats? Hmm. Ember drain. <laughs> Actually, that's the only, that's the biggest threat to us, I think. Mm hmm. With our beefy rose. Do we then bottom. just? Dupe and engrafts guarantee our energy consistently, or even a pyro. If we if we can dupe an engraft, yes. And then what we do is we set up sentient mid row to make sure that we can always kill ember drains after the first hit. There's oh, our okay. So so you don't want to leave the mid flow uh, mid row empty. Because we can just leave the mid-road empty and then have the Dante and the yeah, on the could, top floor. Because Lightwing summons. We could summons. do that, too. We could do that, too. I like this in-graph, too, for what it's worth. I think it's good. Okay. I think we've I think we've solved this. Do that. Uh, the removal... Fire shard. Fire shard? Yeah, sure. Addy! Go on, get. 
and do the beast sludge. That's what we were talking about the entire time. But I'm gonna <laughs> send it. Let's go. I'm excited to see the dominoes fall here. I think mm. we have shattered this Seraph fight. I don't think it's going to be close. Not even slightly. No, I don't believe. Whoa. That's a lot of priority units in turn one. Thank you, draw. Sure is. Actually, Votaveri is not a priority unit, is it? No, so it's that's not. Cool that we got it. Mm -hmm. As many harvests as we can get, so just subsuming in Vine Grasp. Love. Love. Hey, Remnant Host down the. Wait, Remnant Pack isn't even relevant anymore. <laughs> <What about? laughs> yeah, but you can make someone else endless. Mm. Who do you want to be forever? I mean, this wall endless dies Dante. lost, so it, it just has... Uh, endless Dante is a respect? Yes. Yeah. This is a respect function. Love it. Uh, back. This Far back, right? Back, 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 yeah. And then we... Yeah. Just kill it. <laughs> Love that, too. So five of the armor does go against the Votivary, but then all of the 15 from the rest of it mm -hmm. goes against the Big Sludge. Which is perfect. And playing these on any floor really doesn't matter. Hmm. Is molded anything for us anymore, or is that just burn removal with the uh, the consumed? Yeah. Yeah, I guess molded is no longer... I mean, I guess it would bring back one of our units if they were going to die, but they're not. Mm-hmm. Murder. I guess what we could do there, if we wanted to really maximize, is we play out the host first and subsume it, and then we play out the Votaberry. The host and then first. we can't actually get all 20 on the sledge. Oh, you're right, you're right. No, 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 yeah. wait, no, we can't do that. The draft will take up the space. Oh, the, the drafts are too big. You're right. Yeah. See what um, I mean, though? This is exactly the kind of thing that I'll get in the chat room that seems like a very reasonable idea, and it's just wrong, but it's there's a lot to juggle. There's a lot to juggle. I totally agree. That there's always this sequencing in my head, and I'll think of a better play, and I'll mm -hmm. forget how it broke the sequencing that made the original play <laughs> work. Yeah. And then I'll yeah. get halfway through executing it. And I'm like, oh no, this doesn't work. Oh no. Mm. It's a. It's Can we a be very... doing some Sorry. of the subsumes on the bottom to get more kills? Some of the subsumes? Like, uh, were were we able to kill any of those backliners in the previous turns? Uh, I don't think. Certainly I... on some of them. Yeah, we got some of them. We got some of them. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I, it's all I, good. I know exactly what you mean. It's a mental juggle. Okay. Just sitting there thinking, like, can we kill even more of these? Because we had three light wings get up to the top there at the end. But I also think that that maybe just was going to happen. Yeah, that's honestly, like, we don't actually have sweep in this deck. Like, our pseudo sweep is the multi-strike out of uh, Dante. But well, we've got the glimmer. Glimmers yes. are sweep. Sorry, when I say we don't have sweep in this deck, I'm usually talking about uh, we don't Units. have it in our min uh, minion sources. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. And then the way that we're providing it is supplemental through spells. Totally. It's just a nomenclature difference, though. I got you. All right, it's in the brain space now. I love all this extra energy. So <laughs> uh... We can bind grass, but I, a light wing. We're, we're getting the slays. Get but... The slays. If we burn Vine Grasp, we now have 12 cards in the deck and we draw eight a turn. Glimmer is guaranteed to hit the Light Wings. Oh, that's true. Well, we've only got three waves left, but that's true. That's good. We can burn this. This is a good mm -hmm. burn. Look, I, we need the thinnest deck possible, T. Otherwise, I, it's not I'm really beginning a win. to understand. You want less <laughs> cards and more draw. Yeah. I just want to see the same hand every turn. I think I get it. Look, my ideal deck is just one card that I get to draw <laughs> and look at and go, that's a good card, and then I... I guess I'm going to play this card. Win. <laughs> and you just kind of spam one enter, one <laughs> enter, one enter. Exactly. I like my video games to have very little interaction whatsoever. How can I take a complicated deck builder roguelite like Slay the Spire or Monster Train and reduce it to clicker heroes? <laughs> that's really what I want. <laughs> that is so apt. Are, are you familiar with uh, with my like undying fascination for every clicker game and incremental game? I think game? I have heard you talk about this before. Yeah, I think I have. To the point that like uh, someone in my community uh, posted a comment that was saying, "Oh, 
if I was a game developer, I'd make a game that did all of these things and specifically because they were trying to tune it to me. Uh, mm. And it included, you know, farming life. It included like a, a deep story RPG. It included roguelike <laughs> card building elements, as well as uh, mm -hmm. as well as incremental elements, like a like a cookie clicker. And mm. ever since then, I've just been thinking about it every day. Like, how would that work? Because I really <laughs> do want that. Like, I've had a. When am I going to get this game? <laughs> exactly. I was promised this game. T. No one's delivered it yet. What's up with that? It's probably just still baking. Mm -hmm. It's coming. How long can a game take to make? Two, four, 12 seconds? Yeah, must be effectively instant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Is there anything fancy we do this turn? I don't think we subsume this remnant host. It it might like actually want to mm. use the subsuming blade on someone else here. The, the So we're always glimmer on this row, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, we just won. We yes. already won. <laughs> so my pitch is subsuming blade the Votafree and then get a sacrificial resurrection for one big draft. <laughs> to hit one time. Yep. <laughs> and if this floor doesn't kill, this one will. Can go ham. I love it. I love it. Subsume away. No cards in the deck. None at all. We just lost... 700 damage. Can you believe that? Yep. In a single card play. Actually, awesome. we did something really cool, and it's what I was hoping was going to happen when I was playing the uh, tombs, and that's mm -hmm. we now have the ability to just kill with a subsuming <laughs> blade. GG. Or... This fight was looking 2-1. Uh, this doesn't You should even subsume work. this boss. You should definitely subsume this boss. Get eaten. We, we could have made one more draft and gone down to, like, zero cards. Oh, yeah, I could have tried to go for the achievement. It's uh, unfortunate mm. the uh, the card itself does not consume. Yeah, yeah. So we would need to get that on there somehow. Have you got that achievement yet? Is it? It's it's literally win with zero cards. Yes, how to deck build. I believe is the name of the achievement. It's the least achieved. I don't think I've done that one yet, but I, I'd like to. Mm -hmm. I. I mean, I guess the way is to win with units, really. Yes. Yeah, you, you win with units and you have like purge on something, I think. Mm -hmm. I I haven't really yet interrogated exactly how I would do it, but uh Yeah. But it's gonna be an interesting one, one certainly. Maybe it's a maybe it's a spells against consume seraph situation. Yeah. Hmm. Well That's we, a good uh, idea. We're gonna have a lot more of this game to explore in the future. I'm gonna pull out the run summary as well as the generate challenge in the background here. As I say, hey, Teak. Hey, Rhapsody. I have been wondering. Hmm. Yeah, you're wondering right now even. Yes, yeah, th th look, there's some wondering going on at the moment, but it's mostly about phrasing. Now, I have been to many fairs in my life. Fairs, fates, I, I, I don't necessarily know if it's a, a, a local uh, lingo. Uh, for, okay. for naming of these, a, a, a carnival of a sort, right? Uh, there there right. are a bunch of uh, side attractions that happen to line uh, the, the the sides of either walkway. Uh, you can smell corn dog in the air. There's ketchup <laughs> on every single food product, including the ice cream, which I find wretched, but that's fine. Different strokes for different folks. Now, I've been going to these because I find that I'm desperately seeking entertainment these days. Oh. But... I will know. A lot of people at these carnivals are coughing, and I'm starting to get scared. Now, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if I had to transition my entertainment, uh, I, I, I guess my fulfillment of my entertainment quota into a different avenue, perhaps a safer right. avenue. Maybe uh, a bit more domestic. If, if it could be domestic, actually, that'd be really, really interesting to me. Yeah. Like an at-home kind of entertainment thing. At-home entertainment would definitely, definitely fit the bill. But the thing is, one of the reasons I would go to the carnival over, I don't know, the movies, is because mm. you get to meet so many interesting people there. The people wow, that man the booths at the carnivals, the conduit, they are the conduit between you and the game that they are presenting behind them, whether it be, you know, shoot the ducks or uh, shoot the targets or uh, shoot the bottles, right? It can be any right. of those things. But the, the value that they add by being the conduit between me and the game and actually instructing me in some way. Now, 
they they might necessarily benefit in a different way to I, but mm, it's mm -hmm, all in good mm -hmm. fun. And sometimes, even knowing that, I'll I'll play I'll play for a few extra hits because hey, I just want to happen to support that person working that stand at the carnival. Now I don't know if there's any analog for that, maybe in the digital realm. That yeah, I would be something able to find. where you have a where you have, as you say, an interesting collection of people collaborating mm. over the the joyous experience of of gaming with the conduit to lead them all through that experience. It's a shame. I've just not managed to encounter anything like that so far. I guess I'm just uh, just telling you about uh, my, my troubles at this point. It's a shame well, there's have, no way to fix it. I've seen one thing. Huh? I have seen one thing, actually. What? Well, we are living in the future, you know. Wait, what year is it? And it's currently 2020. Huh. They really got away from me. I thought it was 1960, and I was just going down to the Coney Island Fair recently. But hang on, if we you now remember have... your trip to the Coney Island Fair in 1960, that's incredible. <sighs> I, a mind I know. like it's, a steel trap. It's a genetic memory that one. If we have access to increased technology that would have happened over the last 60 years, mm. there has to be some sort of a, a, a digital analog for it. There is. You you are living in the golden age of interacting digitally with lovely people and with conduits for games. And huh. and I've got just the site. What's that? It's twitch.tv. A little big application full of conduits playing video games, making art, chatting about the world, and guiding other people through the shared experience of enjoying something. That sounds interesting, because you're, you're saying there are multiple people. Right, so this this effectively yeah. to me like appears as as a kind of like a community building operation effectively that that has like a bunch of bells and whistles around it, and that's it that's is one of the things. It's I a digital about fair. Carnival. It's a digital carnival, huh. but in this digital carnival, there are tens of thousands of partnered conduits. That's too many. That's that's it too many. Teak, I'm gonna need you to recommend one specific to me that probably appeals not only to my interest but to the interests of the other people who are listening to this video at this point by virtue of them having found this video on this topic now mm. if you had one recommendation for me yes what would it be there's a lovely stream that i think will fit you perfectly a place to where people rally together around a charismatic leader who enjoys a broad variety of games brings their own chipper attitude to everything they engage with and really a depth of knowledge about many, many games and just a depth of lived experience too. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, twitch.tv slash Rhapsody Plays. <laughs> <I knew> it. <laughs> You're going to love it. You You'll feel what? right at home, actually. I think I will. And I actually, I think I might have heard of this guy before because I think he works with the resident broadcaster personality, Sneaky Teak, who... Oh. also conducts a very, very similar... Like, it's, it's insane. That entire list you just gave applies not only to that channel, but also to this twitch.tv slash sneaky take link to the description down below channel that I'm talking about. Let's now, I, I did go from <laughs> learning that Twitch exists Let's go, Ms. to Rizzle. knowing a specific Twitch channel very quickly. <laughs> but it's amazing have... that you knew about that. Your memory really is strong. Like a steel And trap. growing rapidly. It's like a genetic and also evolutionary memory. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, I'm going to be remembering one of the earlier plugs. <laughs> and I'm just going to have to go through that one and say, well, Teak, now you plugged something to me once. I just go and just reiterate them. But if you're looking for that link, that being twitch.tv slash sneaky Teak, you can find that in the description down below. And in fact, I'd recommend finding in the description down below. You're live six days a week between which hours in uh, the American time zone? Uh, usually start? between 7 p.m. Central and <laughs> like 3 or 4 or 5 in the morning, except for Fridays, which are the days I work with Rhapsody, and Sunday, where I'm live at noon. Sounds perfect. Well, if you're looking for that, and you should be, you can find it in the description down below. For the moment, though, my name is Rhapsody. His name's been Sneaky Teak. Hopefully you've been enjoying the latter streak, and we will see you next week.